People dream of owning a restaurant in a quaint town like this. Set in beautiful countryside, cooking fresh local produce, serving loyal locals as well as the tourists. A restaurant to die for, surely. But when I first visited the glass house, it was in deep trouble. Fucking partridge, you... Oh, fucking all right, do our hotel, yeah? Not losing it. No, that's them. The kitchen was in chaos and the customers were mighty unimpressed. It was rare. The other half was just about cooked and it was so tough and it was really disappointing. It was losing money by the second and the owner was about to crack up. I'd rather not be here. I'd burn the bloody place down. You know, better not put that on camera. He was at his wit's end, so he called me in to turn it around. I had just one week to do it and that was a tall order. Garlic popcorn. Don't take this the wrong way. I was yeah, determined to save Neil's way, restaurant. Yeah, last night you had bad breath. Okay. No okay. feeble excuses, Sorry. no hiding place, oh, and no bullshit. You're talking out your ass. I'll go anywhere. You're talking out your fucking restaurant. Not allowed. We sometimes do. Neil Farrell has always dreamt of owning a restaurant, but in three years since he bought the glass house, his dream has turned into a nightmare. He's deep in debt, so many people are after him for money that he's turned his mobile phone off. He could go mad, and he may even go bust. When it's your own place, and it's your own money, mm -hmm. and you're, you're the one that's, you know, yeah. walking the tightrope, yeah. it's, 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 very, it's very different. Yeah. And that's my problem, yeah. that we haven't, we haven't worked out which road we're taking. No, no, sure. At least he's had the sense to call me in for help. But if Neil's going to pull this one out of the fire, he's got to take some tough decisions. I can't do that for him. But of course I can encourage him. First stop, the kitchen, to see if the chefs know what they're doing. The head chef's 37 like me. He trained at Claridge's before my time. He's on 25 grand a year, so he'd better be good. About the same amount as you did uh, the other day. Until he says I can call him Gordon, he's Mr Ramsay. First, I need to watch him cook and see how he runs his kitchen. Morning. Mr. Ramsey, extremely pleased to meet you. Likewise. First name? Richard. Richard. Where do you think it's going wrong? It's a very Truthfully. difficult question. We've been a bit ahead against many a time. What we're doing wrong is should we turn it, turn it into a pizzeria? Is that what people want? It's got to the stage now where I just feel it ain't working and I'm questioning my ability. To control his team and inspire them, the head chef's got to believe in himself. Ready? Otherwise, cloths, forget it. Two cloths. Check Caesar salad, battered salmon. <laughs> Hello. Jay, suit, no communication. Bread, Not a dicky bird. No one even answers the head chef. No, no Bad news. Back. No, no, we chef. No. Nothing. I have to ask for it. Oh, you have to ask for it. Nine times out of ten. Time to test Richard's cooking. I thought what would be a nice thing to do, um, just for today, was to go upstairs and have a quick bite to eat. For yourself, to Yeah, just up. your favourites, your specialities. Yeah. I want three duck cake pudding in. He's no. not having those, he's having four fresh ones. Yeah, no. Of which he's going to eat two. Richard's proud of his duck cakes with chilli jam. Exotic? No. Pretentious crap. They look like Scotch eggs. <laughs> Big <laughs> camera's bollocks. <laughs> And someone's been very lazy in the kitchen because I've got a bloody bone. Mm. Mm. So I'll save that one for later. <laughs> Another of his favourite combos, braised lamb shank with parsnip crisps. It's very clumsy. Clumsy cooking and lazy elements. The oil on these stink. But it has been changed about three or four weeks. The whole meal would set you back nearly 30 quid. Way too much. Here goes. The food was disappointing. Sadly, I did choke. Obviously, salt of law, but that was um, stuck at the back of my throat. But however, you know, I'm glad it was me, not a paying customer. A restaurant owner's best investment will always be in the chef. And if you haven't got that sort of major asset downstairs in the kitchen, then forget it. The guy's got to be a motivator. He's got to be a leader. He's got to make you money. He's got to bring customers back. And clearly, from what I've seen so far, Neil hasn't got that in Richard. That's pretty obvious. Next job, to see how Richard runs his brigade on a busy night. 
Good head chefs get the best out of their team, no matter what. Ian was a waiter but got bored serving food, so now he's trying to cook it instead. Ian's girlfriend, Claire, only works here part-time, as the main job is running a bookshop. I suspect she's only here because she's going out with Ian. I've got wild animals, I've done nibbled at it, but nothing. Randall, the kitchen porter, thinks we're related because we're both from Scotland. Oh. Can you taste this? Yeah. Craig, Craig's in year two at Catering College. He looks pretty clueless to me, but let's hope he proves me wrong. A good team will always turn out good food, Three whatever the piece. pressure. Three it's one of the busiest nights of the year, Saturday at half term. So it's a perfect test. What is that? There are 106 customers booked. If they're happy, they'll spend an average of 30 quid each, plus wine. And the glass house will take over four grand. But their biggest problem is coping with lots of orders. Fucking dumb fucks upstairs are up. That's what's with grass. It's a second fucking call away from non-existent table. As well. kitchen. Neil did tell me, when the pressure's intense, the kitchen collapses into chaos. And you know what? It's true. Someone answer me, someone have a look in the oven. He ends up giving meals away. Things soon go from bad to very ugly. No, it's not fucking all right. Do our hotel, yeah? Wow. That's for the fat. So I said it was horrible. It hasn't been trimmed. Take it to Richard. Jay, get on the phone now. Find out where this fish was going. See if that's where it's going. The whole thing's gone pear-shaped. Everyone's running around like headless chickens, um, eye off the ball, and um, just a massive breakdown in communication. Fucking partridge, you've... Oh. I need a bigger piece of sea bass doing. We have a side door that, that's gone up and needs to come back, and that needs to be cooked some more. You want this fucking partridge yeah. cooking more? Sweet, sweet. For fuck's sake. I need yeah. another partridge, Claire. This... Yeah? Randall, have you just been reading the right check? It's really grim. Apologies, Chef. 36 have had their status. We've had the order in for 40 minutes? Yes. I'm glad, I'll say. That's not good enough. Where's that big check? Where's the big check? You break your fucking balls and you really go for it. And you, and do you know what? I fucking why. Let's go rescue. I'll tell you how you can rescue me in a restaurant. Fucking buy it off me. You fucking buy it off me, mate. Then you'll do me the biggest fucking favour you could. I think someone's about to piss his pants. I think it's just gone there. I've been at the Glass House restaurant in Ambleside for just a day. From what I've seen so far, it's going to be bloody hard to turn this place around in a week. A month, possibly. But now it's inquest time. And there's no question where to start. That cocky chef. Left, please. Yeah. 11 chips. It was going well. Huh? 10 past 9. I went outside, um, had a quick chat with customers, and all of a sudden I started seeing this food coming back. Huh? Where do you think it broke down? You're not using the guys properly, but the guys just fucking let go as normal. The things were coming down, they just went fucking chaotic. Say every fucking Saturday we've ever done is exactly the same. Maybe I just shouldn't give a shit. Maybe I should just say, fuck you, give us your money, thanks very much. Then it wouldn't bother me, and I could go home, and it wouldn't matter if I've got a shit restaurant, because there's loads of them out there, and the owners are driving around in bloody Porsches. I'm driving a shitty Astra van, and I'm fucking close to tears. Do you know what? I think Neil would rather throw himself in Lake Windermere than actually turn around and be the bad guy with his staff. Yeah. It's not all kitchen's fault, but, um, you know, the kitchen's the engine room. Oh, Richard? Yeah, if we're not firing all pistons, then we're not, you know, on the ball. Craig. Yeah? Come here. Did you your elderberry on one? Yeah, come in. The chef's answering you a question. What was his question? The question was, what happened at 20 past nine? Where did we go? We were fucking motoring. You look like a sack of shite. Well, at least have the bollocks to apologise to him. 
Yeah. He's standing there bawling his fucking eyes out. Yeah, take your fucking hat off. We've hit rock bottom. Don't get upset. Huh? Hey. I'm telling you, I don't want you to get upset. The team will need a real boost if we're going to get back on track. It was all going so fucking well. But there's still some problems to tackle. It's my second day in the Lake District, trying to save the Glass House restaurant. And I tell you what, it's an uphill struggle. Next battle, hygiene. This place is about as clean as a puppy's litter tray. This secret film was taken last week. They knew I'd sent someone to check around, but they didn't know it was Mark Sargent, my head chef at Claridge's. And they didn't know he had a camera hidden in his hat. Give up. Plastic containers. They instantly tell me the food's not as fresh as it should be. Even the head chef's not sure. Rather than you than me, mate. This kitchen is filthy. Straight from the dirty floor into the pesto. It's supposed to be a kitchen, not a building site. <laughs> Gordon's going to have their bollocks with this. Morning. Let's go. Jesus, look at the shit in there. Is that clean every night? The cardinal rule of cooking. Your kitchen must be clean. And by clean, I mean spotless. The normal clean down, which is what, every Saturday night after service? We do it throughout the week. But you must have one big clean in the week, no? Just don't have the time. Randall, don't bullshit. It's not bullshit. At the end of the night, the last thing I want to do is look up. <laughs> end of the night. Mate time. Clean kitchen, clean food. Lazy kitchen porter, P45. <laughs> Randall. But it's not just up to the kitchen porter. Everyone should be responsible. But they're not. You've got to trust the brigade that you pay. And secondly, yeah. um, you know, bring them on, evolve them, make them talented. Yeah. Keeping hold of them, motivating them, um, evolving them, increasing their responsibilities, working on them. Let me think how much time we spend together in the kitchen all day long. Yeah. And it looks like a second family, isn't it? It's exactly that. Well, we spend it's the first time because we spend yeah. more time together in the kitchen than we do at home. That's bloody family. Uh -huh. Nothing more I can do till they finish. Time for Neil. I do wish he'd turn on his mobile phone, grow some bollocks, and act like a bloody boss. There are too many customers to cope with on Saturday nights, but the rest of the week, the place is deserted. That's partly because no one can find it. When I walked past for the first time, coming down here from the right-hand side, I had no idea where the restaurant was. Yeah. And here, we should have a nice prominent sign. Right. Glass House Restaurant. Yeah. With a menu board, beautifully lit, and whether you want to put some little bloody neon lights or nice fancy lights around it is an attraction. Right. And, and, and that lit, see that sign there, yeah. the glass house? Yeah. And with a new logo and the new printing, just something that, you know, um, speaks value. Right. Yeah? It doesn't even say we're a restaurant, does it? No, it doesn't say you're a restaurant, no. exactly. I want to see a bloody telephone number on there. Caesar salad. Caesar yeah. salad. Um, duck cakes. Now for the menu. Jam. A well written menu uh, should puddings. entice customers inside. At best, yeah. okay. this one is confusing. At worst, it's just bizarre. I don't want to read popcorn, garlic where, popcorn. Where the fuck did that come from? So something the vegetarians always say that they've got no there's no crunch or no body in any of the dishes. They've they got have. no palate. What are you worrying about a vegetarian <laughs> for? Yes! For God's sake. Vegetarianism <laughs> is on the decline. Um, lunch menu. Mm -hmm. Two starters, two main courses and two puddings. Yeah, I'm just wondering how many people are gonna come in yeah. for a two-course lunch. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to look at the menus of the two courses, and if that's hearty, rustic, country-fied food, then trust me. Because I know you don't want to let go of the sandwich, and I totally understand. I want to let go. I just don't want to let go of the revenue. Yeah. Okay, guys. Craig. Yeah. Open mackerel sandwich. Work down. Good man. Like the season. With a clean that's kitchen, it. we can improve the food, Good. and I can find out exactly how the team works. Time flowers. Chen because they're very, very, very fine. And then, Craig. Yeah. yeah. Taste it. There's your spoon. Craig looks scared stiff of making think. a mistake. He'll have to change that if he wants to be a chef. Less salt. Less salt. Yeah. We'll hand put it in, yeah. Good. Up. 
Salamand? Yeah. If it's not a hot pan, what happens to the fish in the pan? <coughs> what cook? Yeah, well, not only that, it's smart, but it'll boil, so we've got no colour on it. Two more around the outside and one in the centre. Ian's got some bad habits, but he's only been cooking for three months, and I think he may make it one day. How do you know when to turn over? How do you know? The whole thing's changing colour, and it gets halfway. What does that mean? Turn it over. Turn it over, yeah. exactly. But we're just going to finish it on the bottom. OK. Good. Good question. You're a very, very good cook. Yeah? I don't know. Anyone ever told you that before? This restaurant is going to be better than the BLT. Yeah. Up. Up. And over. Good. You know? Different from a BLT? Yeah. Not as good as a Big Mac. Not as good as a Big Mac. <laughs> 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 well, brain, you know that. Okay. In a well-run kitchen, everyone makes a contribution. But Richard hasn't even asked his team what they think the problems are. Craig, what's your um, weak point in the kitchen? This is when I get a lot of orders on. I, I don't have them in front of me, so I, right. like, they get shouted out once, and then I have to probably check the ticket again. Put it together in your own mind, then just jot it down. Saturday nights are quite hard when all the checks are coming on, mm -hmm. and I do kind of lose where I'm at and how yeah. many steaks I've got on order and how many. Mm -hmm. But yeah. when it goes quiet, it's mm -hmm. kind of like it's difficult to motivate yourself. It's yeah. difficult. That's what said, yeah. 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 Mandel, is that your third one? Second. <laughs> Second one. <laughs> Jesus. Neil's finally agreed to a new lunch menu. Simple, fresh food for a tenner, including the new mackerel sandwich. We've just had a taste of each other's as well. This is excellent. Good. Good. Yeah. I'm glad you enjoyed it. At last, <laughs> some happy customers. We've got a restaurant full of happy people. Fantastic. Chive, small yeah. amount. Ian, treat it with a bit of love and care. Place it in there gently. Yeah? yeah? And you don't throw it in. My God, the kitchen suddenly sounds as if it's running well. One salmon, one sausage. Yeah. Wait. Jack, Claire, can you let me know when that front is happening? Yeah. Three minutes, Claire. Three Fantastic. Minutes on the front. Within 30 seconds, every section of the kitchen's talking to one another. Good. Claire, Everyone in the team's responding, but Richard's not working with them. Do you want him to help you? This is what I want to get established. Quiet lunch, not really that busy. I just want to see us working together even more now. I know there's nothing for you to do right now, but there's... Yeah? yeah? yeah. I know it's painful, but get him doing something for you. Please? Yes, yeah, sure. Thank yeah, you. Course. And you? Hey. Oh. Ask yeah. him. Can I do anything for you, Richard? Yeah. What do you need doing? Okay. Sausages, where are they? Mash, red onion sauce, what are we going to do? Yeah. Want to bring the brigade together. Even Richard said to me, mm -hmm. the guy that's got no man management skills, he's been watching you and the way you are with the guys, yeah. and you're bringing out the best in them. Yeah. You're bringing out the hunger. That's what you pay him 25 grand a year for. I know that. I'm not, I'm not being funny or pissing yeah. around with 25 grand a year is a know, lot of money. But I've been stupid with them, I've been cradling them. My head was too far up my bloody arse to realise what the hell was going on. Mm -hmm. Neil needs to get his head out of his ass and focus on his job, keeping customers happy and making sure they spend their money. The roasted pepper and tomato gazpacho is... He needs his customers to bypass the cheap early supper menu that runs until 7.30 and eat a la carte, and that's how he'll pay off his debts and rebuild his reputation. Let me just tell you something. 15 portions of apple cake, 15 portions of fondant and 15 portions of bloody gratin dauphinoise. Five nights a week, it's £125,000 a year turnover. Hey, on three items out of nearly 20 on a menu. Yeah? Um, the last table just arrived, said they were early, 15 minutes early. So I want to make sure that Neil doesn't give them the early supper menu because we're going to find out whether or not they're here for a bargain or not. I want to sell the a la carte, not the cheapo menu, because they look like they've got a bit of money. Now, you've got two menus on today. You've got the a la carte menu and we've also got the early supper menu. Uh, so you've got lots to choose from. Table, ooh, that table just arrived and said they're really early, 20 minutes early. They're booked at 7.30, so therefore, don't give them the cheap menu. The table of four? Yeah, just sat down. Right. What did you give them? I gave them both. Yeah, damn. Will he never learn? Neil must work the tables, not worry about the kitchen, if he only focused, he'd do a fine job. Do you know what? You are a phenomenal salesman. You've got the most amazing wine cellar. Yeah. And you can take an order, you can take an order, and you can cane it on the wine. Mm -hmm. And the better the food, the more money they're going to spend on wine. After three days, things are looking up. 
The guys upstairs are starting to get the basics, but my big worry is the kitchen. Richard just isn't an inspirational leader. It's the biggest problem with the glass house, but Neil just won't face the facts. I'm going to have to show him just how well his kitchen can run without his head chef. Don't take this the wrong way, but I want you to take the night off tonight. And I want you to take the night off. Now, I'd love both of you to have dinner together. Don't you? have to eat here, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Dodgy cheese? Yeah. Yes, you are. When was the last time you guys had dinner together? Truthfully, without any bullshit. We went to Guelph about two and, two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago. Yeah, well, hey, hello. <laughs> two and a half years ago. And when was the last time you sat in it here? <laughs> no? Never done it. Can we do it? Yeah, we can do it. Thank you. There's only one condition that this takes place. The kitchen downstairs don't know about it. And I need a bit of support from you guys as well. No yeah? Because it'd be too exciting. I've sent Richard home. The yeah. team may not yeah. be up to this. Yeah. And if it goes wrong, I may look at a right well, tosser. Yeah. 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 Uh, we had an absolute nightmare night last night. I left you together for two hours and it was the biggest shithole in Britain. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to rectify that. Yeah. You're on the hot plate. You're going to be running the kitchen. OK? And then, if it's going really well, I want you to run the kitchen for half an hour. And God forbid, <laughs> if it is going that well, yeah, scratch your head, scratch your bollocks, I'm not interested. I want you to run the kitchen yeah. for half an hour. Yeah? Right. Maybe from 1.30 to 2 o'clock in the morning, I don't know yet. <laughs> Let's just really work for each other. Yeah. Let's not lose the plot. And let's show him, your chef, that you yeah. guys uh, you know. are more talented than he believes you are. Yeah. yeah. OK? We're going to be OK and we're going to prove to them, especially Richard, that we can do it without him, yeah? Don't worry. Don't worry about it. OK, Claire? Yeah, no worries. Yes. Ready? Yeah. Good. Table 37 has arrived and it's gone 7.30, so they'll definitely get the a la carte menu. Yeah. Two lamb, one salmon, yes? Basket salmon, I'll salmon. Cheers, mate. Bye. Cheers, Cocker. I can only pray that Neil tastes the difference in the food. Then over a nice glass of wine, he can give Richard what for. Here's the centre of the cutter. Think about what you're doing. Don't rush it. Craig? What are you doing? Labeling this tub. Labeling this tub. How about looking at the food and show a little bit of interest what you're doing? OK. P, leek tart, a little bit of asparagus, and just glaze that round. Thank you very much, sir. This is fucking amazing. Can I try a bit of that tart? No, it's not. It's all right. I'll try some. <laughs> if you don't eat that soon, mate, I am. <laughs> I told you I've had a sexual experience downstairs in the kitchen for the last three, four days. Well done. Well done. Okay. Salmon. Don't send it, Randall. Don't send it. Salmon, salmon. Yes. Salmon. Watch the hot Thank fat. Thank you. Oh, really Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Good, 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 good. And okay. bloody good. Randall. When he's gone, are you going to be able to instill what he's instilling in the room? He is now in charge of the kitchen, everybody. Right. How many lamb and order in, please? One lamb, one roast pig, one day from our. Good. You've got to sustain it now, forever. No, no. Do you know what I mean? I am shitting myself to produce this food. I am really, really fucking scared. But I'll die trying. You feel a lot better than last night so far, yeah? I'll say. <laughs> yeah? Um, is that not because Richard's not here? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. What are you not going to say? We won't have a job if we <laughs> say <laughs> that. Well, let me ask you. You've got a pair of bollocks. Has it gone well without Richard? It's gone smooth. <laughs> <laughs>
but has he had the bollocks to read Richard the Riot Act? No, seriously, guys, it really was nice. It was absolutely beautiful. You did what tonight? Uh, we all did it in turns. Yeah, Good made us all do. We all just kept swapping sections. Yeah. We, we all worked well. together as a team, and we all we, we all really played. clubbed together. It was great. Tonight, for the first time in such a long time, I went and had a meal that I can't complain about at all. I can't. It, it, it fucking sex on a plate, guys. Remember, you're my boys, my girls. At the end of the end of the time, mine. But I need to know in the next two days what you're going to do in the <laughs> shop. Oh, Jesus Christ, I don't know, Richard. I fucking don't know. If you want to go and sit in a bookshop, doing fuck all for the rest of your life, that's your decision. I said it was your decision when you wanted to buy. But you know, the buy. bookshop's good for my degree. I can get my degree there. Got me by the shop and curlies there, chef. <laughs> the team performed bloody well tonight, without Richard. And Neil should look really close at that because that is a bad investment. I'm more than halfway through my week at the Glass House. The good news is the kitchen team are doing really well. Last night they cooked without their head chef Richard and did a great job. But Richard's still struggling and Neil, the owner, isn't tough enough to get rid of him. Do you think he takes advantage of you because you're such a nice guy to work with? Sometimes, yeah, but then I think everyone takes advantage of me. He gets paid that amount of money yeah, every month, and it's a bloody good salary. Mm. But there doesn't seem to be any onus on, you know, evolving. Let's get better. He's got to make money. This is your livelihood. Yeah. This is, this I know it is. This is your, I this. And, your and, lease, and, your yeah. livelihood, your family, yeah. Yeah. your yeah. money, and if this goes, if this up, go, yeah, then they've then, all buggered off and got a new job. I know that. And you're sat here yeah. in the shit. So you're taking a bit out for service, yeah? Myself. I'd never put Richard back in the kitchen. Without him, it's a happier place, serving better food, but it's Neil's decision. Do you now realise how much talent is in here? Yeah, the guys I've got and what I was saying to them last night, at the end of the day, we are a family and we've got to work it out. Uh, but you're the leader. You, you, you're yeah, the, you're the big eye, the big I'm inspiration. Dad. I want them to come on. So this slides to... back down. They'll slide back down. No, it's they're, not going to slide back down. Okay. My next challenge, right, to relaunch the menu by the end of the week so the glass house can start to win back its customers. Maybe Richard will finally show me he can run the kitchen. As far as I'm concerned, it's his last chance. For the team, it's another opportunity to prove themselves. Yeah, good. And that's the most important thing about being a talented cook, you know that? Yeah. Having that inner strength to turn around and say, no, stop, that's no, not good no, enough. No. And what did we talk about yesterday? Mistakes staying where? Kitchen. In the kitchen, yeah. every time. And the minute you break that cardinal's rule and you start sending those mistakes, because you think the chef won't see it, yeah. I'm going to cane your ass. you know that? Yeah. Aye. And, um, you know, like you said... They want First step of the relaunch is to cut down the menu. I want to give a little bit of twist on there. Yeah. And when I went through the, uh, the, the menus uh, last night, late last night, mm -hmm. 85 to 90 dishes. Yeah. How on earth we get to control that, you know, over, uh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of lot of gear on there, and no, I've not actually sat down and counted it. Uh -huh. If the menu's reduced, and we've got six starters, six main courses, and five or six puddings, mm -hmm. we're going to sell more of them. Yeah. And yeah. so the more we sell of them, mm. the cheaper it comes to make. Yeah. Especially when we're doing the lamb shanks. Yeah. Hot fat, okay. vegetables in. As well as reducing the menu, we have to make sure the food's top quality. That's the team's job. So we roast them. Main course, local lamb. I've no doubt Claire can improve on the fatty lamb shank I had when I first ate here. That's what we're looking for there. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay. But I want it all the way round, not just on the top. Hurry up, then we're going to make some bread and butter pudding, yes? The bread and butter pudding they used to serve here was pure stodge. My version should be perfect for the new menu. I've put Craig in charge of the recipe. I hope to God he's up to it. What do we play with this time? Uh, vanilla. Baileys. Baileys. So as it cooks, the whole thing is not becoming dry. Yeah? OK, there we go. And my spies told me last week that we didn't even wash this lettuce for season salad. In. I don't want hands in there yet. And a dish they could become famous for, a classic Caesar salad. That's one for a year. Salad, so it's live. Look at the contour of the plate going round. So I'm putting the top part of the salad around the outside of the plate. In the centre, parmesan, crispy bacon, and then 
nice crispy croutons around the outside. There you go. The new glass house. Caesar salad. Ah, fingers off. Look. Here. Wipe yeah. it. A brand new menu and a fresh start. If all goes well, tonight we'll see the glass house reborn. 70 local people have been invited to try the new food. Everything, everywhere, has got to be just right. And I mean right. I mean perfect. Don't take this the wrong way. Yeah. And I mean don't take this the wrong okay, way. Yeah, go on. But last night you had bad breath. OK. Yeah? And when we're standing there talking to customers and you're trying to sell them something, yeah, it doesn't smell good. Even Richard seems to realise the importance of tonight's launch. Listen, I'm fired up. It's fucking gonna work. Yeah? Yeah. Let's scream it. Let's fucking shout, Chef. When I call a check out, yeah? Wait yeah. for the end of the check. Yes, Chef! Yes? Yeah. Yeah, come on. We Chef! We're Looking at reducing the menu, Richard, and having um, slashed the prices, this is not an expensive dish to put together, is it? Not, no, not at all. Fresh fish, seasonal fish. I've designed the menu specially for Richard. Everything's cooked in advance, so there's no chance of a mistake. And the haddock cost absolutely nothing this morning, was it? 70 pence a pound? Yeah? Yeah. And it smells lovely. Sex on a spoon. Um, who have we got in uh, that we know tonight? I'm tabling of all the people locally that have been these bed and breakfast. There's quite a few in the media. Yeah. We've got the, one of the head guys from the tourism. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, they want to contact you, so I'm you gonna, make, uh, make yourself available. I'm going to recharge my mobile, which I... Uh, Turned off many months ago. Yeah. Hallelujah. Neil's behaving like a proprietor with balls, proud of his restaurant. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. He's even booked the guests in shifts, so there's less pressure on the kitchen. Progress at last. How are you doing? We've just got everybody in by the 8 o'clock, so we've got 25 minutes. This is easy. Hello. Hello. We've never met. And in two minutes' time, our, our, our silence starts. Claire? Yes? If the kitchen's quiet, everyone can concentrate. Then it should be impossible to confuse orders. Yeah, like Mash these to be made up, wait. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, 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 no, come on. Randall. Randall. Yeah. Come here. We're supposed to work together on this, aren't you? Sure. Richard's calling out orders, and you're tipping cutlery upside down. Can at least wait till he's finished first, no? Sure. So once he's finished talking to his brigade, yes, we can give him an answer. Sure. Well, this lamb's definitely better off the bone. Really yes. It's melting. I've got parsnip. Roast parsnip. Yeah, your fa your favourite. Really <laughs> good. <coughs> very, very smooth, so hopefully touch wood less than that, it'll be even better. Ian, yeah. I swap tables. You still have three Caesar salad and one pressed ham. Richard's back in charge of the kitchen. There's only food to reheat and salads to dress. The dressing's missing, that's all. Apart from that, it looks lovely. Do you mind if we start? Two pieces of panchette, please. Ian's distraught, but it is Richard's job to check everything before it leaves the kitchen. Let's not moving on your toes. Now! Yes! Yeah. Oi, good lads, good lads, come on. Let's not go down, guys. It's starting. Lift. Randall, he's making a lot of noise. At the front. But he's not leading the team. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, nail tables 49, 21 next. Orders are piling up again. Chef, we've got, we got to speed this up. Yes. We're looking bad. Not tonight, please. Not tonight. We're not losing it. Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on, Randall, quicker. Five fish pies, two, three, four, five, six. Six total. Two at the front, Claire. Fifteen. No, that's them. Don't really know what the hell's going on in there, but, you know, let me just say, for the last three or four minutes, uh, being in there, it looks shockingly Randall. bad. Where's the check on, Claire? Forty-nine. It's up in the top. No, don't it's, go. Forty-nine. Yeah, you got the number. They really have managed to fuck it up properly again, and they don't have to cook anything except dress the salad and talk to each other. They can't even do that. So uh, this is a fucking embarrassment. Wait one second. Listen. Yeah, that's fine. Take one Caesar salad out, please. Richard. Yes. 
Next. I'm not taking any prisoners anymore. I'm seriously not. People don't pull away, they're out of here. Because I'm not fucking about. I won. Table 12. Um, what's that there for, Rich? Neil may say he won't take prisoners, but surely he can see Richard can't cut it. But instead of plucking up the courage to sack his chef, he moans about my Caesar salad. You don't get it at all? Yeah. Too big. In comparison to what you were serving? Yeah, I know what we were serving, but the sauce with that is absolutely beautiful. The dressing is very rich. Absolutely. Um, Total bollocks. Right. That is a proper Caesar salad. Done. What I haven't done is crush the lettuce. And the shit I saw last uh, week with cooked jumping on the salad I'm not and just... squashing it. No, let me finish. Oh. Squashing the salad up the side of the bowl, and you're telling me that's too big. That is a fresh salad, beautifully washed, and I haven't even put my hands in it to dress it. I've let it dress itself in the bowl. So what you're telling me is absolute bollocks. And I'm ready for a fucking argument. Right now. You're talking you out your an ass. Argument. If you want an argument, you're talking can, out your ass. Can we go outside now? I'll go anywhere. Park. You're talking Rather out your in the fucking middle of the ass. restaurant. Can you stop talking? You're talking out your ass. There's no point talking to me. Oh, really? Amazing. He's got big enough bollocks to stand up to me, but he can't tell his own chef who's paid 25 grand a year that it's time he took his P45. We survived the evening, but only just. I shouldn't care, but I do like these guys, and I want the place to be a success. I am so distraught with Richard tonight. He couldn't organise it, couldn't control it. And you know what? He had nothing to bloody cook. It's my last day at the glass house. Hey, it's red tree time. Yeah, how far is it from here? Two on the car, about two minutes. Yeah. The most important thing now um, is to tell the real workers they've done a great job. I didn't think I was actually capable of doing the sweets until he actually came. Uh -huh. But now I think that I've I'm just starting to get the hang of it. Mm -hmm. And we will keep the standards up because you've really done done a lot for the kitchen and you've done a lot for me personally as well. You've done it for yourself. All I've done is drawn it out of you, that's all. Got it in here. Yeah, out. yeah, I, that's, that's it. All. That's You've done it. I, so I felt it today when I had my little time to myself. I just couldn't, couldn't help but just stand there and just go, bloody hell, this is me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you haven't had any sleep no. since last night? No. My God. Why are you be sleeping? Just a drama, just the rush of the job. So, uh, the rush of the job? Oh, yeah. The inspiration I get from you. <laughs> you honestly haven't slept? No, honestly haven't. Bloody hell, Randall. This is not an SAS course, you know that. Randall, got to get some sleeping, boy. So fired up, he hasn't slept? God, maybe we are related after all. Wood, 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 You have a natural touch with food, you know that? You walk around the kitchen like a ballerina. And just the way you position yourself, you're agile, you're on your toes. And I still can't believe you've been cooking for three months. Yeah. Right. Touch yourself, just get it. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of I'm really touch. going to miss Claire. Because your strength over the last seven days has been inspirational. I think I'm going to sell my shop. And I'm going to get it back into the kitchen as soon as possible. I think that's a good idea. Gordon Ramsay thinks I'm a really good chef. <laughs> Oh, my God. Neil had a word. Well, you guys have a word every night after service. What did he say last night? He gave me the options, three options, and took the third one. Uh, what were the options? Well, one, one to leave, two to take a pay cut and uh, drop down the ladder, and three to stay, work my arse off, develop the guys, carry on with what we've been doing over the last few days and, and go for it. Are you confident that you can become the new glass house chef? Yeah. Truthfully, how long will you give him to pull his socks up? A month. A month, yeah. Yeah. Just promise me one thing. Yeah. You make the fucking decision and you stick to it. No, I want more than anything in my heart for Richard to prove me wrong. And I hope he does. To convince Neil of his worth, Richard's come up with a brand new signature dish. This 
is risotto with Palagio cheese and pomegranate. So you've got a crunchy pomegranate seeds yeah. mixed in risotto. Yeah. Sounds um, fucking revolting. <laughs> oh, fuck me. <laughs> Never let your mistakes leave your kitchen. Oh. Randall, I want you to hang that up That's with a bit of pride and passion, and I want that to replace that disgusting, dingy, horrible, yellow, smelly clock downstairs. Hey. Come on! Hey! Who's that, Chef? Fantastic. A year ago, I spent a week at the Glass House restaurant trying to rescue it from disaster. Signs everywhere. Sign there, sign there, sign there. Last time I came, couldn't even see a sign. Two courses, £12.50. Now I'm back. But is it just the signs that have changed? Hello. Where is he? Hello. <laughs> you got there. Hello, How are you doing, well, mate? Yeah, very well, thank you. Hey. Had no problem finding the place. Did you not? You're looking well. You're looking no, very I'm, well. I'm very happy. Fantastic. Yeah. Got myself a set of bollocks. And uh, how big? Huge. Absolutely <laughs> huge, mate. First thing I noticed outside was just how attractive the prices were. Considering the prices have, have been slashed. Yeah. Um, we had a lot more people through the doors. Fantastic. You know, and for the first time in four mm -hmm. bloody years, mm -hmm. I'm actually enjoying mm -hmm. going around the tables, yeah. chatting to people. You sound like an owner. Yeah. A proud owner. Someone's on the ball, knows these customers, and enjoys his job. Mm. It's the bollocks, I'm telling you. world of difference. It was a big difference the last time we met. Things were really grim when I came here. And Sunny by grim, I mean sure. catastrophic. It's not the law, but that was um, stuck at the back of my throat. But the whole place was a shambles. Orders, and you're tipping cutlery upside down. You're talking out your ass. Can't we go outside? I'll go anywhere. Come back. You're talking right, out your in, in fucking the ass. Treat it with a bit of Head Chef Richard was desperate to gain yeah. respect from his team. Remember, you're my boys, my girls, mine. But his future as the leader of the Glass House Kitchen was in serious doubt. How long will you give him fully socks up? A month. I certainly didn't think Richard had it in him to tempt the customers back. Oh, for fuck's sake. I'll die trying. And um, the big question, who's the chef? Got Richard still down there. Richard. Your mate, Richard Collins, head chef. Fantastic. Yeah. So you kept him? Yeah, yeah. Right, be nice. Chef? You all right? Yeah, very well, thank you, sir. Yeah, you look different. Uh, do I? Let's wait. <laughs> You've got burns on your arms. You've got short sleeve jackets. You're caked in shit everywhere. That means oh, you've been grafting. Changing this, yeah, but no, it's, uh, it's been some graft this August. Uh, bookshop gone? Bookshop gone. Yes. Bookshop sold. All gone? All gone. Nice to see second chef Claire is still in the kitchen. But fellow Scott Randall and trainee chef Cray have moved on. That's beautiful salmon, that. Yeah, it's fantastic. Junior chef Ian, however, is now running his own section. A wise move on Richard's part. And you look like a chef that's been in the kitchen for 10 years now. Running around. Huh? Oh, kitchen smells nice. Mmm, food. So Neil seems pretty confident in Richard. Yeah, I Me? I'm going to keep an open mind on this one. I'll soon find out how good he is when the food starts going out, and I'm going to put him under pressure. When I first got here, a busy Saturday light tonight would cause complete meltdown in the kitchen. Time to see if things really have changed. And tonight they're all nervous, because Gordon's down there. I did give Richard a lot of grief last time, so tonight I'm going to give him a chance to get his own back. And for the next three hours, I'm going to be your commie. So you My tell me, personal? Your personal commie. You tell me what section you want me to run, tell me where you want to go. Um, you're the chef, you decide. His biggest problem was communication. If you can order a hard ass like me around, he's definitely got it licked. Give me a time in on fillet of beef well done, medium well, chef special. But it's not long before the shit hits the fan. What's the matter? Rotto's fucked. Some of it's cooked and some of it's raw. Fucking typical. I can't serve this uh, celebrate risotto for ten minutes. It's fucked. Right, start from scratch. Would that have gone out if I wasn't here? No, Truth it was. It, no, you can't send shit out like that because if you send shit out, it takes the restaurant down, and I don't want to do that anymore. Right, Blake, risotto, eighteen. Wait. Rock and roll. Richard seems to be exercising some quality control at last. No one's had a bad risotto tonight. We knew we'd made a mistake, but nobody else did. Okay. The, cellar, the, the risotto. Communication has definitely, definitely improved. 
There's only one member of his team he's not talking to. I'm fucking bored. I'm bored. Richard, you don't like me as your commie chef, do you? What else can I do? What else can you do? Go downstairs, get me some baby carrots. I need some more doing. Need some more doing? Or I will do by the end of the evening. Yes, chef. Yeah. Top shelf. Carrots. 17 years' experience in a kitchen, and he's got me peeling carrots. I still don't really like the way this guy cooks, but the food and service has definitely got better. Nice. Gone up a notch, huh? I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. But you, you can see a difference, yeah? Yeah. No, I feel a difference as well. And the people that count seem happy. I've had the lamb, that was really nice. Didn't really need to use the knife on that, it just fell apart. Three of us had the fillet of beef, that was beautiful. Oh, I had uh, the ghost cheese to start with. Delicious, as usual. Customer numbers are up by a whopping 30%. And in spite of a significant reduction in prices, Neil's takings have increased by 20%. On order, one ghost cheese, follow one chef. I've got to hand it to Richard. He succeeded in building a strong brigade. But next week, it's all change. Claire and Ian, Richard's two key players, are leaving the glass house to broaden their experience in London to work in my restaurants. <clears throat> I think an apology may be in order. I didn't mean to feature staff, Richard, you know that. Hey, uh? Gordon, I'm more than happy for you to have them. Hey, as a head chef, you'll be happy to see them progress. You're too right. And guess months. what, when they walk into the kitchen, guess what's going to say? You're mine. You're all fucking <laughs> mine. <laughs> mine. <laughs> That's a Ricky Ricky Chavez moment. <laughs> you, 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 oh, you're mine. Oh, here we go. <laughs> As good a talent spotter as Richard is, so far, Ian and Claire's only replacement is Gareth, who until six weeks ago was a bouncer. At least he'll be able to deal with any aggro in the kitchen. No limes. Check on, one Caesar salad, one parfait. So can Richard muster the balls to inspire a brand new brigade who will take the glass house from strength to strength? I still have my doubts. I fucking ask you tonight at six o'clock to tell me what to do as a commie. And for the Come first on. time, hold on, hold on, hold on. Whether you told me to sweep the fucking floor or roast a fillet of beef or whatever you wanted, you came back to me and told me to peel fucking carrots. And that pissed me off because I wanted to see you standing fucking strong within your own brigade telling me what to do. And you didn't do it. So next time you get that opportunity, you fucking take it. I miss my opportunity. Because I'm not fucking coming back. <laughs> Is that a promise, good? I promise. <laughs> Future plans? Future plans? Ah, oh, you know, just to carry on and improve and improve. Just not, not to sit, not just to stand still. Because that, you know, you stand still, you get complacent, and then you get a little bit fed up, you know? Um, apathy sets in, and that's what had happened last time. So you it's know. not gonna be long before you start driving a Porsche? I will wait and see, you know? I think I'll keep my Astro van. Everyone goes on about it now, so I'm stuck with an Astro van for life. <laughs> Well done. Cheers, man. I really mean that. Thank you. Uh, well done. And I'm really happy. Good. Well done. Thank you very much. My initial reaction when the programme went out was I hated a lot of you. Why did I swear more than Gordon? I went in the bank the next day. Old D is standing next to me. Well, I won't be going to the glass house anymore. Your language is disgusting. I said, well, bugger off and eat somewhere else. Walking around Tesco's and this guy's mouth just dropped open. Are you a chef? Literally, every table was Caesar salad, Caesar salad, Caesar salad, you know? Yeah. And pony granite, bloody risotto. Hey, can you remember that order we got? It's Scottish good. guy. Can I order two pony granite pizzas? But yeah, we got everyone asking for that. We actually put it back on as a special, and it sold really well. <laughs> Hundreds of restaurants open in Britain every year, but over two thirds close in the first 12 months. The Walnut Tree in Abergavenny has been one of Britain's most famous restaurants for nearly 40 years. Set in beautiful Welsh countryside, it's the proud holder of a coveted Michelin star. It owes its outstanding reputation to this man, Franco Terruccio. He was one of the first celebrity chefs. People came from far and wide to taste his food and he was said to take over £30,000 a week. Three years ago, Francesco Mattioli, another Italian, bought the walnut tree. I know him well. He's managed some of London's best restaurants. So he should know what he's doing. 
I've come to find out how, in just three years, he's managed to mess it all up. Morning, sir. How are you? How are you? All right? Mate, you're losing weight again. No, huh? I'm not losing weight. What's the smallest numbers you've done in three years? Zero. Is it for lunch? For uh, dinner once. It was a Thursday night. And, um... Michelin star? Michelin star, and it didn't happen. Simple as that. Shit. And, uh... Yeah, that was bad. Every kitchen just has to have a head chef running it. Since Francesco lost his, he's been trying to do the job himself. It's, uh, one of those I'll take this. Are you going to serve it? Yes, because... Jesus. <laughs> cook, serve, cook, serve, cook, serve. It's a big mistake. Francesco's not a trained chef, and he shouldn't even be in the kitchen. Keep on going. He should be out in the dining room, charming his customers. Hello. 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 How are you? All right. After all, there are more staff in the bloody kitchen than there are customers in the dining room, and not one of them seems to be doing anything. So you're just cooking potatoes here? Yeah. This huge section, potatoes. and all you're cooking potatoes. is spuds. Yeah. No. You're out of order. Yes. Can I say right? Francesco doesn't trust anyone to do anything. Right, Bill, on 11 and 12 right now. Octopus. So another three, you said. Ciao. Lovely. All Thank the best. Thank, Thank you very much. After you. Thank Talk you. about a headless chicken. Bye. No wonder he's lost weight and customers. You're working like a donkey. I mean, you're here, there, everywhere, and, and, and trying to run it. Overall, you're the, the most amazing host. You can charm the pants off anyone, um, and you, you can sell good wine. And the short period of time I've been in here today, uh, one thing you know, I've come to terms with is it you've got to get out of the kitchen. The Walnut Tree got a Michelin star after Francesca had been here for a year. That's given to a restaurant on the back of the consistency, the freshness of the ingredients, keeping it seasonal, and the individual flair of the chef. But Francesca's lost the chef who won the award. If the standards have slipped, the inspectors will soon take away that precious Michelin star. Time to check out the food. Because I um, saw lunch today from the kitchen, um, I'm going to go in the dining room now uh, and have a, a bite to eat. And I'd like you, not to present the menu, but to show me three dishes, what represents the walnut tree in. With a Michelin star, you can charge top-notch prices, but only if you provide top-notch food. I'm pretty confident he's like it. Porcini and Parmaham lasagna was always a favourite here. Boy. Very boy. You've got to move on. You've got to search and you've got to evolve, develop and, and create excitement constantly when you're charging these prices. Main course, fish stew. Thank you. But the mussels haven't even been cleaned. We serve mussels in a self-contained stew. Yeah, they've got to be clean, because when you're serving them like this, you can hear at the bottom, there's a lot of grit and sand. So it's just like eating a bowl of clay, seasoned with sand, that is constantly grinding between your teeth. 28 pound a main course, then someone taking the mickey. Because if someone served that in my restaurant, I'd go fucking berserk. <laughs> OK, um, I asked you earlier for your best, the best, the best of Wales. The big build-up was for the classic Italian fish stew. And sadly, when it arrived, everything in that dish was overcooked. And while you piss off for a three-hour break to style your hair and to have a kip, clean the fucking muscles. So we've hit rock bottom. OK. Yeah, welcome to the real world. Sure. Tomorrow, we're going to pick ourselves back up and start off with a clean slate. It's my second day in Wales, where I'm trying to help the owner save the famous walnut tree restaurant. It's got all sorts of problems, but it does still have a Michelin star. And you don't get that without a top chef. But Francesco's lost his. We need to find another one fast. Head chef criteria. Head um, chef criteria. Young, enthusiastic. Yeah. Ambitious. Firm, ambition. Yeah. Someone that keep you out of the kitchen. So just right. <laughs> Something who keeps me out of the kitchen. And, uh... Hello, Ross. Good evening, Mr. Ramsey. Uh, we've got a list of ingredients. Um, we're just going to ask you to go through and cook up 
Something very simple. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the Good. surprise, lads. That's <laughs> all right. Always a surprise with me. Salary. Starting salary. Starting salary, I would say, clinically. Always an interesting question when you interview a young chef. What salary are you looking for? And they yes. can tell you within 30 seconds of course. Yeah, what they're about. <laughs> what would you be happy with as a starting salary? I'd be happy with 30. 30 as a starting salary. Fuck off out of it. Um, 15 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see if he uses all the ingredients, whether he puts the clams with a haddock with um, the onions, or he does a nice tomato um, a rocket okay. salad. Yeah. Something plain and simple. Your mother could make that. It's just eating raw pasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boring. It's the sort of kind of thing I expect the missus to do. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit plain, Jane, boring, um, and certainly not worth 30 grand a year, that's for sure. No, but like, that's the ingredients you were given. But don't start blaming your tools. No, no, no. No? No. Take it on the chin. I, I wouldn't have changed it, no. Next up is Santo Rosso, second in command at the Holiday Inn in Swindon. Could be a bandito, huh? Could be a big bandito. <laughs> Let's shoot the bandito. <laughs> what do you think, Maria? Mafia. Mafia. <laughs> Santo, Gordon, yeah. take yeah, a seat. Um, very well experienced man? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I like cooking. You like cooking, yeah, yeah. I can see that, yeah. Uh -huh. What do you know about the walnut tree? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing at all. You don't know about the history? Uh, no. The reputation? No. Uh, the Michelin star? No. No, so, if you don't know anything about the walnut tree, walnut tree yeah. why did you come for the job? Because I, I say it's time for me to change. Right. Yeah. Um, and what's the current menu at the Swindon? We have some steak. Yeah. Gammon, chicken, and a lot of microwave. A yeah. lot of microwave. Microwave. A lot of microwave. Think of something yeah. magical. Yeah. Keep it simple. Oh, yeah. Um, and enjoy it. OK, thank you. I'm thinking, wow, what kind of flavor I wanna, I wanna come up with, you know? And let's see. Very rare, a joke like that can cook. Very rare. This is a fantastic one. And just explain what they are, please. Yes. This is a, uh, I call it pasta fresca. Pasta fresca? Pasta fresca, fresh pasta, uh -huh. with vongole and salata. Mm -hmm. Thank you. With the lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Just nice and clean. Just and what's all, that is pepper? Yeah, black pepper, yeah. Black pepper. Thank you, Joy. Thank you very much. I felt like sneezing at all that pepper everywhere. Yeah. Jesus Christ. No, that's just a pile of stodge. There's nothing in there, is there? He's sad. Yeah. He's sad to see some... There's also a compliment. Can't be yeah, I, I, I found it yeah, miles away from what we wanted. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, a little bit embarrassing, really. Yeah. Because it was below average. Yeah. £23,000, and I wouldn't even pay him 23,000 lira. Even with the Michelin star, it's going to be hard to find a head chef in the middle of Wales. But I'm still banning Francesco from the kitchen, right now. Where's some water? Where's Francesco? Yes, sir. I really would appreciate it if you don't come anywhere near the kitchen. Keep I know uh, how stubborn you are. Don't dare step over that line. Stay that side. Thank you. This way, I'll get to know the team better. Blakey's the most junior. He just come off the building site because the weather's too cold. Spike, he's here on work experience. Kevin's a waiter and handyman. He's been here since the old days and knew the walnut tree in its prime. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Gordon. How are you? Yeah, very well. Uh, obviously, with that accent, local boy. Well, very local. From uh, Abergavenny? Yes, I am. Uh, do you like a laugh and a joke? Or... Uh, no, I just, yeah, I just love hard work. <laughs> Definitely. Be evil, like uh, we all yeah, yeah. Oh, you're be evil. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's a local boy. Very ambitious and keen to get on. 
But Francesco says he's not a team player. So that's my secret. I'll stay back down there. Put a padlock on that. <laughs> and Stefano's the most experienced chef. Francesco won't let him run the kitchen. But I want to see what he's made of, so I'm going to put him in charge. It's a normal lunch service. And Francesco's wife, Enrica, has brought some friends in for a bite to eat. Kitchen's in your hands now. You've got to come out. You've got to start talking and start. You're propelling the brigade and bringing it together. Let's go, just go on. No, no, turn around and address the brigade. That's it. Just go on. One tortelli di zucca, one chicken plus chips for four kids, one crab, one and dive. To follow, one loin of pork, two chicken, and one rocket. Uh, I need some chips for these chickens, yeah? Come on, Steph, too quiet. The only person I can hear now is Gary, and you're running the kitchen. Let's go. OK. Garnish, Blakey. <clears throat> Where the fuck's Blakey? Blakey. What are you doing? We'll fly the R, yes. I need the answer, guys. No wonder Francesco's back in the kitchen. His family are still waiting for their lunch. <laughs> Everything's out there now. Everyone's standing, staring at their food, and two people haven't got it. Come on. Come on, Steph, let's go. This is a fucking disaster. Stefano, how long? Chips. Yeah. Do you know this is for the... This, right. It's for the boss's wife, you know that? Nice knot this time. Send it. The food is late and cold. Stefano can't organise chips for a four-year-old. OK, right, come here, just stop everybody, yeah? I mean, stop. Come here, you, come here. Shut up! Shut up! I'm talking. That was a disaster. Complete disaster. The food standing, hanging around the past, nothing happening, and you're over there. And then just, you know, I'm sorry, but it's not good enough. You're not, nothing's coming out, OK? Stop now, OK? You take over okay. and see if we can pull ourselves together a little bit and get ourselves out of the ship, because in 15 minutes, this place is going to be the biggest shithole in Wales. You, shut it, OK? Back in your corner and listen to what's going on. Do you hear what I said? Yeah. Do it! Right, let's go. A little clear down. Yeah, clear down first. OK, Gary, you know where we are, yes? Yeah. And the brill. You decide exactly what you want doing in your mind. Two minutes yep. before you dress, you turn around and dress the brigade and tell them exactly what you want. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, one braised beef, one venison sausage, one brill, one tuna away. Wet, wet, wet. Let's keep it together. Hey, we're as a team, and I don't want you back in here telling us we can't fucking do it again, okay? So, a bit of teamwork now, yeah? If he can't hear you, then don't screw him for that, okay? Because we're not a one man band. Check on, two covers. One pigeon, one oysters to follow, one ribeye, one duck. Wait. Okay. Extra good, can you go with the scallops? One cooked salmon, one risola, and a salmon and yacht, please. Gary, he's a real arrogant little fucker, but at least he can speak, unlike Stefano, that can't even run a fucking bath, let alone a fucking kitchen. Any of the tuna bait first off you, please, Spike? And, Blake, you got three chips, yeah? Yeah. We need three chips and one tomato yeah. salad, please. Wait. Yeah. Good. 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 Well done. Good. OK, well done. Well done. I ain't main course. It's bloody difficult to get out like that, you know? Well done, yes? I drew in a few more people. How'd it go for you? I'm not very well. Thank you for being honest. I thought it went terrible. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Really bad. You really do have a problem talking to individuals, you know that? And today was a disaster. And so we've got to now work on this in the next couple of days and stop you being a cook and look at the important role of becoming a chef. There are still problems in the kitchen, but I just don't understand why there are so few customers. These days, they serve around 300 customers a week. The previous owner, Franco, used to serve 800. I'd love to know what happened to the missing 500. Have you heard of the walnut tree? Yes. Oh, yeah. When was the last time you were there? It was Franco's last meal. Just yeah. before he went, it was one. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the walnut tree? It's overpriced. Overpriced. Yeah. And how many times were you there? Oh, very, very frequently when he was there, because he was open all hours. He mm -hmm. could turn up at 11 o'clock at night and be assured of a very good welcome. Do you think he's missed yeah. now, now that he's I no longer so. there? I think so. 
They're not as good. Not recently, since it's been taken over, no. Since Francesca took over the walnut tree, nine new restaurants have opened nearby. If people think his place is too expensive, they've got plenty of cheaper alternatives. Morning, ladies. So we've been there when Franco. Mm -hmm. It seems to be everyone's favourite in Abergavenny, Franco and Anne. They always seem to be the darlings of Abergavenny. Yet no one's been since Francesca took over three years ago. Uh, yeah, well, I, I came to uh, sort of ask some locals about um, the walnut tree in Abergavenny. And I end up finding Ainsley Harry's book, <laughs> £3.60. Jesus Christ, he's going to be pissed off when he finds out at £3.60. Can't believe it's so fucking expensive. Still. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned from Ainsley's book. If your customers won't pay top whack, cut your prices. Otherwise, they'll eat elsewhere. Jesus, is that a typing error? 70 quid. It is somewhat a little bit intimidating because it's so expensive, which puts people off. And have we gone up in price over the last three years? Have we got more and more expensive? Yeah, probably the plateau for the mayor was 55, 60. Uh, 60, wasn't it? 60. And then... I I push it to 65, and only in the last two months I put it to 70, because mm -hmm. the price of the fish is going up and up. Mm -hmm. As usual, Francesco thinks he knows best. Difficult? But I won't give him a bollocking in front of his team. Anyway, just now, I've got other fish to fry. There's still no head chef. So far, I think Stefano and Gary are the best candidates. But Francesco just won't consider them. Is that, it's, uh, He's got to be realistic. He's in the middle of Wales not London. Mm -hmm. Straightforward. And if we don't find anyone as good as Gary, or we don't find anyone as good as Stefano, then you know, we're going to look at what we've got internally. Uh, <laughs> no? Well, well, no, I think that I think we need uh, somebody really from outside. Mm -hmm. In inside, it, internally, I can only be the one. Francesco just doesn't see it. But Fresh, Gary and Stefano flatly, have talent, parsley. and I'm going to show him. They're ready to go. The only way I'll get him to try their food is to make him believe that I've cooked it. Really important tomorrow night? Yeah. It's your half hour. So have you thought about your dishes? Think of an oyster starter mm -hmm. with like a herb crust of gratin on the top. Mm -hmm. For a main course, I was thinking a, a meat of some sort, like a, I don't know, a fillet with some, some shallots. Mm -hmm. um, so important. We'll do service. Yeah. Then at the end of service, we'll sit them down and bang, you okay. let rip. Sure. Fuck, you let rip. <laughs> Big yeah. time. Uh, right, Stefano, let's go. The crap in the kitchen about the delegation, the lack of direction. Yeah, we can work on that. That's workable. But this is your half hour of magic. All right. Then we'll sit him down for dinner and we'll say, eat the following. This is me. This is me on a plate. Yeah? All right. Hard on material. How do you yeah. say erection in Italian? Erection. <laughs> erezione. Erezione. <laughs> OK. Erezione. <laughs> Domani. OK. That's it. Erezione. <laughs> Fuck me. It's a posh word for an erection. As well as preparing their meals, Gary and Stefano must do their normal kitchen duties. Straight away, Stefano starts working with the team. But Gary, he's only interested in his own meal. Even I think that's too ambitious. Uh, Gary, two seconds. You've had a bit more time on your hands this yeah. morning to get ready. Yes, um, sir. He hasn't done anything for tonight, swap so in. we swap over, yeah? Yeah. Okay. okay. So once all these vegetables cook, then yes. I want you in the kitchen. Sure. Concentrate on tonight's service, concentrate on the canapes for tomorrow night. Yeah. And then you take two hours. Yeah. Enough? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Two hours they organise for tonight, yeah? Okay. I really yeah. thought Gary had great potential to be a good head chef, but quite honestly, he doesn't give a fuck about his team. He just cares about himself. And selfish individuals don't make great head chefs. Francesco and Enrico think I'm the chef tonight. If Gary and Stefano hadn't prepared, it'll be my reputation that suffers. What's in here? Bread drums. Uh -huh. Cheese, parmesan cheese, uh, parsley. Tastes nice? Yeah, it tastes very good. And Steph, what have you got? Uh, ravioli. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stop being nosy, Gary. Now you concentrate on your own food. Stop being nosy. Got a little rivalry there. It's not a okay, it's not a competition at all. Don't be silly. Okay, inside is what? It's uh, duck and chestnuts. Duck and chestnuts. Yeah. Stefano's duck and chestnut ravioli shows real imagination. No, I like the um, the sweet. 
if you feel you, you can taste something sweet, it's, that's nice. It's chestnuts. Mm. I like the way it's presented. And Francesco approves of Gary's oysters. Very nice. Stefano? Yeah. Gary? Yeah. Look. So far, so good. Clean place. For me, it's a sign of yeah, happiness. Yes? It's clean place. Good. For the main course, Gary's cooked fillet steak and Stefano, sea bass. Nice. Both of you. Well done. Happy? A lot of. Yeah. Happy? Yeah. Oh, still can't even talk to me yet. Right, go, Kevin. Whatever you do, don't drop those. OK, well yeah. done, guys. Yes? I like the colours. I'm sure I like the taste. Hey, I've never seen you so happy. <laughs> yeah? It's about bloody time. Huh? Hi, guys. Good fun, eh? OK? Yes? Yes? yes. Supper? Supper. I really like the ravioli. Of duck and chestnut? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I and liked then, uh, everything else. Interesting. Mm -hmm. For me, yes. I would say most of the dishes they were exciting. I was interested in the in the ravioli, uh -huh. which uh, again I found it exciting and very good, very yeah. nicely done. And the beef? Uh, and the beef, uh, I would have liked a half a dauphinoise underneath the beef. Some form of potatoes. Some form of potatoes that would have bring the dishes up and balance it out. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, but I didn't cook any dish. Right. Oysters, beef, yeah. sorbet. Yeah. Was his menu 24 hours ago? Yeah. Yes? Duck ravioli, sea bass, and pancakes were Stefano's. And because they weren't been interviewed yeah. during the week, because I think Francesco doesn't think they're good enough, I wanted them to cook three dishes each for you both to have dinner tonight. Yeah. So I didn't touch anything. Thank you very much, Steve, for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. OK, uh, Gary, two seconds. Stefano. Um, well, that was interesting tonight. Yeah? All the dishes that you both done, yeah. he said, was capable of going on the menu. Oh, great. Because for me, it went very well. Both of you. you came up trumps. Yep. And if he wasn't going to consider you for the job, then I was. Yeah. It's day four. I'm halfway through my time at the Walnut Tree. Francesco, the owner, has been stubbornly resisting my suggestions. We still need to find a head chef. And with a £70 main course on the menu, I'm determined to make him lower his prices. If it continues being as quiet as it is, are you going to look to try and bring the prices down a touch to create something new about the walnut tree to get people back in here? No, I don't want to go down on, on, on the cheap side because but have you there got is any a fucking choice. I'm not talking about asking you to open the doors and become a happy eater. <laughs> they spent 37 years getting the business to where it is today. Of course. You're spending so three years and it's sadly on the decline. What I'm trying to say is yes. you bring a new traffic coming through the door yeah. and you tweak the prices to establish yeah, the confidence. And once you've got the confidence, then over a period of five or six years, yes, you turn the volume up on the justification of what you're doing. I'm not convinced. I would say I'm oh, not convinced. I'm oh, sorry. Well, it's, it's me. That's you me. shouldn't be so stubborn. Absolutely. Try I, it. I it's Just... Bit... Gordon, Jesus Gordon, yeah, but Gordon. Christ. Gordon. If you've got the Gordon. food and those customers are coming through the door and they're generating sales, the acid... Is the, is the wine. Is the wine. Which, who can sell that? Me. Excellent. So the chances are far greater to do it that way than to do it the way you're doing it currently. In a way, yes, yes. Fucking hallelujah. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Where the fuck have you been? <laughs> Where have I been? Go in the morning. Please try it. Well, I'll do it. I'll do it, mate. No Please? Problem. No problem. Thank God Francesco's finally agreed to one of my ideas. And there's more good news. At last, a candidate for the head chef's job with a good pedigree. Yeah. And you feel now at the age of 26 that you've worked in the last two establishments as a sous chef, you're now ready for your first head chef's job. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of getting to the point where I'm in the kitchen. I'm, I've got my own ideas, the, the way I want to run things. Um, OK, obviously some um, butter mushrooms, rocket, gorgonzola, green mustard, garlic. See you in 15 minutes. Okay. Thank you, Spencer. A bit of tomato salad, the tagatelli of mushroom, sort of like carbonara almost, the linguine. And now I'm thinking like a light roquefort and um, rocket salad sat on top, if I've got time. <laughs> Spencer Ralph has travelled all the way from London. This would be his first head chef's job, but he has worked in a Michelin-starred restaurant. 
He looks strong. Mm. Impression is good. Yeah. Yes. I like the idea of V26. Someone young, someone vibrant, someone you can push. Certainly. Yeah, definitely so. Mm -hmm. So, at 26, if, if he's not hungry now, mm -hmm. when? He's never going to be here. Yeah. Thank you. It's uh, a rocket in tomato salad mm -hmm. with mushroom carbonara and poached haddock. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. It looks neat. Yeah. Yeah. Flavors there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Take a telly. Looks. Nice. Mm -hmm. It's not. Uh, it looks beautifully cooked. It's not stuck together. It's mm -hmm. not congealed. Um, He's listened to the brief. He's kept it simple. Yeah, yeah. What he has shown in the last fifteen minutes, the guy can cook. No, the flavours are there. Ah, the flavours are there. Exactly that. Right. Sit down, Spencer. How do you feel running the establishment um, with a Michelin star? It's a little bit daunting, mm -hmm. you know, to do it the first time. But the scale? I'm, yeah, a little bit. But mm -hmm. I, I'm also. You know, it's what I've always sort of aimed for. It's always what I wanted, you know. And I sort of feel confident as well as scared at mm -hmm. the same time. Thank you very much. Thank you. With the Michelin Guide due out in a month's time, I really hope yes. Spencer accepts the job. Yeah. Grazie, Spencer. If he can start soon, there's just a slim chance the walnut tree can save its coveted star. Almost everyone is looking happier. And it's so important to find the right person to gel with those two guys, especially Gary, huh? Because oh. there you've got one little ballsy Rottweiler that really wants this job and you're not prepared to give him the opportunity. No. I hope we found a great head chef. Now, I want to change the atmosphere in the dining room. It's too cold and formal. We need to bring back some of the rustic charm that people loved in the old days. Let's hope Francesco agrees. Right. Just, just the first reaction, I would say no. But, uh, in the kitchen, I want to see more energy and more get up and go. Stay on focus. So when Gary wants to say something to you, you're up here listening, ready to say yes or no, not on the floor. Cockroaches live on the floor. You're not a fucking cockroach. Even with that hairstyle, you're still not a cockroach. Pan on. Schlotz in first. Lightning season. Everyone Carrots. needs to know when the food's good enough to leave the Mix kitchen. Together. Even Blakey. I saw you taste nothing much time. Cook in, in and out, microwave, like an absolute fucking donkey. But not cook. You won't actually taste anything. No. You're just pressing buttons, take it out, put it on the plate. It's got the Michelin star, this establishment. You're going to have to learn how to taste properly and understand what a balance of flavour is about. Yeah. We're going to make a chef for you, you know that. Yeah. If it kills me, we're going to make a chef for you, you know that. Good. How the fuck how, I don't know, but I'm thinking about it now, yeah? Kevin's been here years, so he can tell me if the atmosphere is more like it used to be. Uh, this looks nice. And just breaking it up, and it's not just a dull or boring. Yeah, yeah less starchy. It's, it's been like it for years. Less clinical. Have you done any? Oh, yeah? Yes. Yes, yes we'll go through. Yep. Um, Apparently, people difficult. used to come for lunch and stay for hours, and spending what? even more money. We need to get back that relaxed family feeling. Ah, God, what a difference. A big difference. And cosy, which is yeah. the most important thing, yeah, and that's what was missing. Welcome, isn't it? Yeah, more Thank welcome, yeah. yeah. It looks fantastic. Uh, we're going to be ready on time. It will be, yes. Yeah. Good. The dining room needs one last touch to restore the old traditions put in place by its previous owner. And do you know what I think the entrance needs? A picture of you and Franco. <sighs> no, the old generation passing on to the, the, the new generation. I think Francesco's finally seen the light. But it's been a tough few days and the team could do with a night off. Kevin's been trying to get us all down to his local since I arrived. Now I see why. I've heard of the naked chef, but this is the first time I've ever seen a naked waiter. On the catwalk, yeah! Do you want to tune in on the catwalk? I'm too sexy for this song! Day six, and despite the hangovers, it's straight back to business. Today's a big day. The walnut tree is 40 years old this month, and Francesco's thrown a party. I think he should invite Franco and Anne, the previous owners. They're a vital part of the restaurant's history. There is one thing I want you to do for me, yes. which you're not going to like. I know you're not going to like it because you're going to um, disagree, but I really think it's important. Um, I want you to bring Franco back, and I want you to talk to him. I can see already in your face you don't want to do it. I don't have to say anything. My expression says, says yeah. everything, I think. The first minute Franco walks in here, it will silence the rumours and it will cut the bullshit out and it will start encouraging the locals to come back. The message is 
telling him that you want to maintain what he's built. That's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for the reputation of the World on Three more than mine. Franco and Anne, we're here for 37. Yep. Yes, Francesca's been here for three. 37 plus three is 40, yeah. Massive celebration, huge celebration. 40 years of history. Yes. I'm going to put it back on the map, lift it, and alongside that, I think there's 80, 90 guests coming along. Yep. We have some really nice, exciting canapes. Stefano. Yep. Can you Quinell? Can you Quinell? Give me an answer straight away. Don't take two-week holiday yeah. between. Not that nice, but... Okay. Not that nice. We're going to learn again. Right, yes. watch. As quick as you can. In, twist the spoon round. Before it cools down, yeah? Before it cools down. And then heat the chocolate mousse with the back of the palm of your hand again. Yeah, and then it slides off. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. OK, Stefano, go. Go first. Not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad. For the first time, not bad, not bad. A little bit too much on that. Right, again, again. Over the last few days, I've realised that Stefano is really talented. It's a shame he's just so shy. In? And out. Oh, that's good. That's very good. Right, Gaza. In? And out. Too slow. 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 Too He's not nearly as good a cook. Yeah, Gary, if you want to be so kind, yeah, please don't put yours next to mine. <laughs> Can we cook? Stay there. And I've done, I got this hat made specially, you know that? Now you're at home. Now you can cook your heart out, your hair's perfect, all nice and spiky, and all the girls never give any still want to shag you. Tonight's party is make or break for Francesco. He's on the verge of going bust, and he must start filling the restaurant again. You know, looking bust. A bit, you know. It's obviously it's going to be a very emotional evening uh -huh. for for me and uh, and the rest of the uh -huh. customers that is going to come here. And for one, especially Franco Tarusco yeah. and Anne. Um, Work it. I Work will. them. I will. It's your place this time, and you're proud to show this off. Well, certainly, yeah. Huh? After all this, yes. Francesco's invited 80 of the great and good of Abergavenny. Everyone's just got to love everything. And if they tell all their friends uh, the food is as good as ever, then Francesco could soon serve 800 people a week, just like the good old days. Right, just run it through me, run it through me. Mm -hmm. What was that? Ricotta, ricotta tart. <laughs> Like, get out, get out, get out, get out. We're going to get on board and... Uh... Yeah. Good. They're going well? Yeah. What's the feedback? They're all loving it. They're all loving it? Yeah. yeah. We've all been waiting for Franco and Anne to arrive. Hopefully this will prove that Francesco is carrying on the traditions they established at the walnut tree. I would love to, but as I'm going out to dinner tonight, I don't know. No, I'm not going to go I'm very glad that you came here, both of you, and uh, to celebrate this special event for both of us, Thank for all of us. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Yes. Shall we do it together? Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I was 40. <laughs> It's been a terrific night. I just hope it marks the start of the Walnut Trees revival. I just wanted to say thank you very much, everybody, because uh, without you, it wouldn't have happened. And uh, I really appreciate your hard work. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. And Gordon, of course. Thank you. The following morning, a phone call to Spencer Ralph brings another breakthrough. Hi, Spencer. It's Francesco here from the Walnut Tree. How are you? OK, Spencer. Thank you very much indeed. He's accepted the job as head chef. Have you sounded excited? Yes, very much so. Yes, and I'm excited too yeah, to see. Fantastic. That's quite uh, refreshing. It's a relief, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I was very happy, very happy. Excellent. Good. There's only one more thing Francesco needs to sort out. 
With Spencer arriving as head chef, there can only be one second chef, Stefano or Gary. One can stay, but one must go. Gary's so ambitious, I'm not sure he'd give Spencer the support he needs. How would you feel if you brought in a new head chef now? Well, I mean, I'm, like I said before, I'm not upset about it, but um, if, Fran if Francesco feels the need to do it, then I'm glad going to learn for whoever comes in if they've got something to teach me. Mm -hmm. But then again, if, if, they're, if they're no good or if they're just as slow or, or awkward to work with the Stefano, mm -hmm. I'm just going to push on and mm -hmm. still get ahead of them and uh, prove him wrong, pretty much. And so even if a new chef came in... I'm still going to give him a run for the money, yeah. Yeah. And the Franco... What Spencer needs in a number two is a chef who combines teamwork and cooking ability. It is clearly obvious that both you and Gary can't stay. One of you will have to go. And I yeah. think you should stay. Well, I'm, I'm to say that. Uh -huh. <laughs> and when the new head chef arrives, I think it's going to be a good recipe for success. But we yeah. need to keep that authenticity of that Italian style, that rustic feel of the walnut tree. That's you. I don't know what, what will happen. Um, mm -hmm. well, you want to stay here, don't you? Well, I would like to stay here. Uh, it was a, something changed here. It's a hard decision. Though Gary and Stefano both have things going for them, I'm convinced Stefano would make a better second mm -hmm. chef. But will Francesco agree? I doubt it. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. One thing I have learned over the last few days is they can't work together. Uh, right. Total impossibility. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, definitely not. But one will have to go. One okay. definitely has to go. My, my, my big concern is Gary is not a team player, but someone like Stefano would sit and be a great number two. You've worked with them both, yeah? Which one would you have to get rid of? Well, uh, in, in this case, uh, I have to go for Gary. At last, Francesco and I agree on something. Stefano should stay as Spencer's number two, and Gary should go. Spencer has brought new hope to the kitchen. I'm convinced he'll improve the standard of food. Has he managed to stay out of the kitchen? Um, yes. And he hasn't come in with his jacket on? Not yet. Woo! That's good news. But there's also a huge disappointment. Disillusioned with all the changes, Stefano, with his unique Italian influence, has quit. Leaving Gary to slither quickly into the role of second chef. Was that you who pushed him out? No, it wasn't me that pushed him out, no. I see it as if um, Spencer's been given the opportunity to do whatever he likes. Does that upset you? It hasn't upset me so much. I think it's upset Stefano more than me. Mm -hmm. But you were stronger than Stefano. Yes, yeah, some, some of us got to survive than the others. Mm -hmm. Sorry, there's no room. The head chef's arrival has created a new buzz in the area, and business is already picking up. But just a couple of weeks later, bad news. The Walnut Tree Inn has lost its precious Michelin star. Sorry to hear about the Michelin star. Yeah. Big blow, that one. We're getting back. Change is afoot. But is it too little? Too late? Some time ago, I spent a week in Wales, at the Walnut Tree, trying to turn its fortunes around. And let me tell you, it was a hell of a week. You, shut it, OK? Back in your corner. The Walnut Tree was desperately on. trying to cling on to its Michelin star. Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. But it had two big problems. No head chef. Boy. Very boring. Don't dare step over that line. Stay that side. And a stubborn Italian owner, Francesco. I can see already in your face you don't want to do it. His overpriced, unimaginative food was putting the customers off. Oh, Jesus. Is that a typing error? 70 quid. Form a ham, some stuff, well done. Chicken the arrival of Spencer Ralph as head chef brought renewed hope to the beleaguered kitchen. It's moving, hey. Evil. Vibrant. Action. Hey. But getting Francesco to lower his prices was like pulling canines from a saber-toothed tiger. And if he doesn't cut his prices and listen, well, quite frankly, he's on his own. Fuck it. All that was in December 2003. Hello, Kevin. I'm just hoping that the transformation of the walnut tree runs deeper than a coat of whitewash. Good to see you. I'm a lover, you know what I mean, on the catwalk. And that Francesco has finally acted on some of my advice. How are you? How are you? Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you too. Again, how's business? It's been precarious. You can't, you can't do, you know, one day you do two, one day you do 70. You can't, 
Yeah. Predict it. And today, how many for lunch? Eight. Eight will be. And tonight? Tonight, eight. Nine. Nine. So business is depressingly static. I'm surprised because Spencer's clearly had a positive influence on the quality of the food. And Francesco claims to have dropped his prices. So why are the people of Abergavenny still not flocking in to eat at the walnut tree? I'm, I'm still under the impression that it's very high priced. In comparison, then we've got some super restaurants around here. Interesting. That knock you into a cold hat. I did think about going there, and then I had a few reports back that they said, oh, it was OK, but it was yeah. a bit average. And it was a bit expensive for what you were getting. Yeah. You've got to come up with something a lot better, yeah. haven't you? And to move encourage on. people. Encourage yeah. Yeah. Everywhere, everywhere around here now has to be good, yes. or people won't patronise it. They won't be ripped off. No. Not in Abergavenny. I think everyone thinks it's expensive, of course. For some bizarre, stubborn reason, clearly obvious, he hasn't brought his prices down to sort of encourage everyone on this high street to get back in there and see how good it is. Francesco's always been a hard nut to crack, so I'm going to present him with some hard facts. I thought I'd got you to understand the importance of creating traffic, a healthy business and a positive cash flow. 68% of everybody that I spoke to this morning won't go anywhere near the place because it's rumoured to be too expensive. We need the customers. I think I can't lower the price down more than what I can, uh, what I've done so far, because... Your main course is five pounds more expensive than anywhere else within a ten-mile radius. No. So some bizarre that. reason in your mind you think that you have to lower standards to bring the prices down. I can't lower my standard more than this. No, but you don't have to lower the standards down. It's clearly obvious to why they're not coming back in here, because it's too fucking expensive. So I, I, how, do you, how do you want me to juggle it? Flexibility. Uh, we've been flexible. We've been flexible. Bullshit. No, it's not bullshit. bullshit. No. Well, next time I go down the high street, Abergavenny, you fucking Gordon. come with me and Gordon. walk with me. I'm not interested to listen to them. I'm not interested at all. Well, that's wrong. No, it's not wrong. That attitude stinks. Come with me. I'm now. proud of what I am. I'm proud. Please, if you want to come, the door is open. If you don't want to come, fine. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint with Kevin. I'll get okay. fucking... Francesco is still pedaling the wrong way down a one-way street. Good. But his business is on the edge, and he's clearly too scared to take his feet off the pedals. When you drive a Ferrari, you drive a Ferrari, you don't drive a Cinquecento. I'm confident Spencer's a talented head chef, but he could be doing more to help Francesco bring his prices down. Uh, he won't listen, OK? I want to spend a little bit of time with you and just have a look. Uh, two examples. Now, they look expensive. They are. Why don't you cook one? Yeah. Tell yeah. Francesco I'll pay for it, OK? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't want you to give me a fucking hard time. I'll buy the dish, OK? All right, chef. I'm going to illustrate just how easy it is with his most expensive so starter. Just, um, grilling up. Griddle scallops and baby vegetables are on the menu at nearly £14. That's a phenomenal portion. It's a huge portion. Already I know I could take one scallop out and cut the rest into three. I would say there's key dishes that are my flamboyant dishes. Mm -hmm. I like to go and get ingredients, that, you know, just for me to enjoy myself. But it's not about you, it's not no. about me, and it's not about him. It's about what? Yeah. Customers. Customers, that's right. And without them, we're what? Not working. We're fucked. <laughs> And the reason why we don't sell any pudding is because the start of the main courses are too big. Spencer needs to start being a bit more canny with his dishes. By cutting the enormous scallops into three instead of two, I can use one less. So we'll serve this to Francesco, OK? Yeah. And I'm using big vegetables instead of poncy baby ones. They're not only tastier and a lot cheaper, they'll give this dish that rustic Italian feel that Spencer's current menu Spencer, is lacking. And you've got some nice uh, wild mushrooms from out in the garden. Yep. And there's not a baby veg in sight. All this without any compromise in quality. A little seasoning on there, a little bit of lemon juice. Thank you. You'd never feel hard done by there, would you? That's... Now, I know we've used two big scars. We this new dish can go on the menu yeah. at a significantly lower price without any loss in profit for Francesco. And if he sells just one more as a result of this price drop, then he's already made money. OK. Got two minutes? Yes, sir. OK, something I want you to taste, please. Yes, sir. Does the portion look small? No, it looks big. It looks big. We're one scallop less already. We've got rid of the baby veg. The dish has been taken down by four pounds in cost per portion. I would yeah. love you to go upstairs and put this on the menu at nine pound fifty for tonight. Uh -huh. no. 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 What we're trying to do is highlight the easiness of the flexibility you can now start 
restructuring your menu cheaper without going down in quality because that's what pissed me off this morning because you said I'll bring my prices down I'm going down in quality and I've just proved to you from a chef's point of view you prove it from your chef point of view from a chef's point I of got view. in my pocket what the scallops at that price can sell no, that mean, I can sell that you mean, one, you're, right? you're missing my point. I, I, no, no, you're I, missing I, I, a point. I, 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 and trying to help Yeah, but you're you. picking on the most expensive bloody things that there is on the menu. That's right. I don't have any problem to sell it. Let, let, let I don't have any problem to sell it. Let me just tell you why. I don't have my, 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 my first order was a scallop, so what are you yeah. telling me? That I'm doing something fucking wrong? No, no let me tell I'm you. I'm not doing fucking anything wrong. If we can put the price down, uh -huh. I said I take your concept okay. inside myself. Okay. You haven't taken a fucking thing. No. Because you're so fucking stubborn, you're not interested. I'm just trying to explain. You're in the middle if of you're drinking wires. Chablis, you're not drinking the house wine, innit? I'm if just... you're buying a Mercedes, you're not buying a Fiat, innit? Are you stupid? No, I'm not. Are you thick or something? No, I'm not. You are? No. You must well, you're be telling fucking me. stupid. No. So the future of the walnut tree is rosy and you've got nothing to worry about. No, I, don't, I don't want the, the future of the walnut tree being rosy after three and a half years that I'm here. Mm. I want the future of the walnut tree to be progressive. Um, he's clearly happy with what he's got. And if that's all he has got, then it's not going to work. He needs to wake up. Nothing's sinking in. If this doesn't succeed, I just... Uh, I, I, I don't I blame want, you, Gordon. I, you know, no, I just... I, I don't want you to don't blame me. No, I don't blame you. Say what you like, I tried my best, but nothing's working. And I do. Because it's like best. talking to a fucking breeze block. Well, then you're the same. Because you don't understand what I'm doing here. I'm the same as you. No. Now no, you're mate. dreaming even more now. No. I'm the same as you. No, mate. Kiss it's... my bollocks. No. I'm an the sa I think like you. You've done an exercise. I think like you. Let's change the subject. I'll fuck off home and you continue struggling. Let's leave it like that. Fine. Stubborn fucker. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me, are you Italian, aren't you? Isha in the home counties. Full of stockbrokers, ladies who lunch and golfers. 35,000 rounds of golf are played every year on Isha's More Plays golf course. That should be more than enough to keep the attached restaurant full. But none of the golfers ever go, nor does anyone else. I have just a week to turn the place around, and that's a tall order. Jesus Christ, I'm like a monstrosity. Um, first impressions, yeah. Um, yeah. I'll turn it into an open prison for young offenders, because it looks fucking ghastly. I think this could be my toughest job yet. I've come to try out the food. More purple. Everywhere. But the place is deserted. Looks like I'm dining alone. Not a good sign. God knows what they're going to serve me. The camembert? Deep fried camembert. Have I gone back in time? Dear Lord, for the about to receive. May I not be poisoned for the fourth time in four months. Amen. Jesus. It reminds me of rancid fish fingers. That's disgusting. Thank God I've got some wine to wash it down. God, dear, oh dear. It absolutely stinks. It's caught. Where is everybody? Still. At least I can be sure no one's watching me. Mm. Next up, huge, huge duck a l'orange. I have gone back in time. It's the culinary equivalent of flared trousers. Is the meal all right then? Mm. This duck tastes like it grew up in the 1970s. It's not exactly fucking tender. Is it popular, the dish, duck a l'orange? Not really. No. Have a little taste. <laughs> it's quite tough, no? That's really difficult to mm. eat, yeah. I know. You sure you always spit out? <laughs> no. Are you going to swallow? No, it's a moment. It's water? It's still in there. Mm hmm. You're still chewing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Don't swallow it. <laughs> Horrible food. No wonder this place is in trouble. It's completely clueless but on the verge of being embarrassing. Hmm. So what do you think about your meal tonight? En anglais or français? En anglais. I'm lost for words. Almost. Merde. Well, at least I wasn't poisoned. 
So I've come back to meet the owners of this 1970s nightmare. Try to be nice. Huge place. Richard Hodgson and Nick Whitehouse have sunk all their money into this place, and it's been a disaster. It's like an old country house hotel, isn't it? Like a... well, historically, it was someone's house. This empty room will be costing them nearly £100 an hour for staff and overhead. Well, your potential in this is fantastic. It's got character. It used to be a successful Bernie Inn in the days when steaks were posh. They used to do 200, 250 covers a day here, valet parking. It was, it was probably, probably the last time it took his real money, wasn't it? was probably it? the only restaurant in the high street. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Aren't they ashamed to be still serving the same food from the Bernie Inn days? And who's got the food background? I mean, who grew neither, neither of us two. No, no, background's, no. Our background's drink. Um, right. I spent 15 years in the licensed trade. Richard sacrificed everything to buy this place. If I can't help him, his family could be homeless. I should have done this in my 20s when I didn't have children and didn't have uh, a huge mortgage and, and everything else. We both sat there and thought, shall we do it, shan't we do it, and a few dark nights and we thought maybe it's a bit risky and there's a lot of risk involved for us both. Nick's put everything he's got into the business as well. Running a restaurant is completely different from selling drinks. No wonder the kitchen is such a nightmare. I hope the best. Hervé was a French head chef when they took over. But no one liked his cooking including me. We gave people some shocking experiences, I think it's safe to say. Well, we, we taught them what the extremes were like. People can be quite emotional about food and you've ruined my life, that type of thing. I know how they feel. Um, engine room, kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Good afternoon, Let's everybody. meet the rest of the kitchen team. And Mark Robinson. Mark Robinson calls himself the executive chef whatever that means. So you were head chef somewhere else before you came here? I trained as a chef and then um, became very disillusioned and went off and got an IT and business degree. Gave up cooking for a business degree. Doesn't sound very passionate about food to me. He was brought in to sort things out, but all he's done is spend thousands of pounds on microwaves and fryers and piss Hervé off. Come on, strawberry Frenchman. <laughs> Hervé, enchanté. Enchanté. Tu responsable quel poste là? Uh, and the Good. Then he said he doesn't like you. <laughs> there are two people in the dining room. Let's see if their lunch is as bad as my dinner. Almost everything seems to be deep fried, and the oil smells like it hasn't been changed for months. When you walk through the restaurant, the first thing you can smell is like a um, tainted sort of fried smell. Fried smell. Yeah. Almost a little bit like hospital food. Yes. Chef, why is there no anchovy fillets in the salad d'Isoise? It's like carrying of salami soies, but it's their own. How many new potatoes around? Uh, only one. One new potato? Yeah. Fucking hell, for £9.50. Any olives? Uh, no. Nothing's ready here. No beans cooked, no eggs cooked. What the fuck is going on? Or are we just in the shit because we've got two customers for lunch? This kitchen is a nightmare. Mark was brought in to update the food, but I can't see what he's done. How can he get away with a menu like this? And how would you um, how would you describe the style, the food? Um, it's um, the, the 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 a la carte stuff that we do. It's very um, it's very much here's a steak and three sauces you can have with it. It's not a great it's not a massive detraction from what they were serving before here. And three sauces are what? Uh, brandy and mushrooms, Stilton and bacon, and a peppercorn. Jesus. Those three um, sauces sound a little bit Bernie Nish. Well, they are. I mean, this is the thing. It's a bit. It's a bit 1976. You can say that again. A little nuke sauce straight out the microwave. Still to the mushroom. It's an insult to cooking. Oh, in a bag. Damn. No wonder we need so many fucking microwaves. Hervé. Thank fuck, I'm not hungry. Sorry. Parsley. Hey, come on. We'll be the same without parsley. Come on, get it on there. There you go. Good old Bernie. I know you love your parsley. And so far, they need a fucking rocket up their ass because if they continue the way they are doing now, it's going to go down like a sack of shit. And quite frankly, I don't think they actually care about customers. And every dining room needs to care about customers. Otherwise, they don't come fucking back. It's my second day in Isha, where I'm trying to help the Moore Place restaurant and golf club. The food stuck in the 70s. Mm, Bisto. 
As usual, there are no customers. Today, how many is booked for lunch? None. Nothing. And tonight? None. So... But we did have someone come in to look at the restaurant. It's either here or TGI's. Fucking hell. I'd rather go to TGI's. Mark Robertson, the executive chef, should be tearing his hair out. But he's taking the day off. But you look different out your whites. You look like a monk on leave. <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to play golf later. Oh, Fancy around. I'm going to play golf. We're supposed to be running an empty restaurant to get it off the ground, to get it moving towards something semi-decent. Not fucking around on a golf course. At least he knows there's something wrong because he's hired a new head chef. Now there are three. Talk about too many cooks. One's a joke Frenchman. The other's stuck in the 70s. I hope Andy Trowell's from the 21st century. You've really got your work cut out there. I know. And I you know. can't go in with all guns blazing, booting them all in the ghoulies <laughs> in the first 24 hours. You'll have no, no one left. I know, I know. How would you, how would you play this situation? Narrow the menu down to yeah. begin with. Yeah. Start off really simple. Yeah. Um, and, and, and look what's going on locally. Andy looks promising, but I'll have to show him what he's up against. What is that, Andy? Huh? It looks like something out of the night. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Jesus, painful, right, painful. It's like a dehydrated silicon implant. Actually, it's a microwave frozen deep fried burger. What is that? This is a salad. Looks like a plate of worms. Kind of breaks my heart when I see this shit, you know that. No, mate, do you think that's nice? Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. And he's worked at some really good places. He's going to need so all his experience. I know. I know it's instantly so... bolognese sauce in They're a not... jar. They don't use that, though, do they? I wouldn't we'll, like we'll, to we'll say. We'll ask uh, our executive chef, Mark, on that French one. French He's as shocked as I am I mean, by all this ready-made packet of food, lazy cooking, taste, and it's more yeah. expensive than making it fresh. And you smell that? That's what the smell is downstairs yeah. in the dining room. Yeah. Mm, I mean, on a so. Sunday, I bet you can smell it all over the building. Jesus Christ, right down each your hot street. <laughs> no wonder there's no fucking customers. Hervé. Yes. You're being a little fucker again. <laughs> How can we have a Frenchman here and we're buying French dressing in? <laughs> little fucker. <laughs> I'm impressed so far with Andy. No, so he seems keen to make changes. And this? Jerry. Yeah, this is what I want to get away this from. Is... And they put it on the menu as Brussels pâté or Brussels something. Brussels with chicken. Yeah, it's just plastic crap. Yeah. No, they're definitely left on the burning here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. Frozen Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Andy could be the chef I've been oh, looking for, and that means I can get out of the kitchen and work with the owners. It looks like a deceased bridge club. Why spend £10,000 painting the building a horrible colour and nothing on improving the food? The reason for doing it was to show people that the place had changed and that it was very different. Yeah. At night, though, we lighted up with purple lighting. It looks fantastic. Very, very but it different. has probably alienated some of our old core business. Most important thing is to focus on the food and get the food up to where it should be, what we should be offering local, uh, how we should be um, selling the food mm -hmm. um, and, and, and bringing in a bit of a bit of a bargain. I'm taking Richard down the high street to find out where his ex-customers are eating. I can't believe how close together all the restaurants are. Yeah, really, really On one high street. street. Isha's made up of wealthy city types, ladies at lunch and, surprisingly, thousands of Americans who work for a big conglomerate in the area. And red peppers. Yeah, it's absolutely packed in there. Yeah. It was just ladies there. Uh, actually drinking champagne. Yeah, spend per head. It's having lunch. Uh, 15, 15, 20 quid. 15, 20 quid, but it's churning all the time, you know. There's a good example. Though. Yeah, very good. Richard's a businessman, and I want him to see how much money these places are taking. There are 23 restaurants on the high street, so competition is fierce. But I bet most people don't even know there's a restaurant at Moore Place. Quick challenge. I'm going to ask a family. I'm going to stop them and say, have you heard of more Place? Yeah. Do you know what it is? Do you know where it is? Um, come and try us for lunch. Have you heard of more Place? No? Yeah. Have you heard of more Place? Absolutely not. You haven't. Have you heard of more Place? Yeah, I've heard Up the road there. Have you been? Have you used the place before? No, I don't like the cabin. You don't? You don't like... <laughs> it strikes you as being an item. Another purple building there. It's a funeral director. You didn't copy that, did you? No. <laughs> well, more Place? Yes. Well, before they painted it, um, a strange colour. <laughs> right. you're, you're not a fan of the colour? No. If we paint it differently tomorrow, would you come back next week? Yes. Yeah. There they go. I'm gonna get, I'll get two brushes, you can have one of them and I'll have the other. <laughs> so, in a survey on the colour. <laughs> I think this trip's opened his eyes to the potential of his own restaurant. And it's given me an idea for the new menu. The plan is to give the restaurant a new direction and get people talking about more place. 
Now, you know, the deep fried shit has to go, and um, ah. the parsley around the plates and the chopped tomato, and that, that, that's fucking 70s crap at its best. Yeah, Gordon, um, Gordon, I have no desire to spend the rest of my working day smelling of fat. There's, there's you know, thousands of Americans that live locally that um, is a, the most amazing market to tap mm. into. And there's no reason why you can't have, not an American themed restaurant, but an American influence, but get the place famous for two or three dishes. Sure. When someone was driving past, they said, oh, Christ, look, there's more place. You know, they've got the best burger in Isha. Yeah. Who gives a shit? It's a talk point, whether it's the best burger, whether it's the best chowder. Yeah. It doesn't matter. But as usual, Mark has a problem. My concern is how that would go down with um, any of the older clientele that we've got that come in. OK, is, it, is that keeping the business afloat? No, no. No, there you go. No disrespect. Yeah, I've gone into restaurants before where everyone's been nervous about the existing old yeah. farty, boring <laughs> bastards that sit there <laughs> and take a two-week holiday in between courses and, and dribble throughout. <laughs> the Viagra coming with a coffee. Oh, right. No. <laughs> We're looking for new, vibrant, young, exciting customers that are going to be loyal to this place for the next ten years. Sure. Can we fuck off in the kitchen now? Yes? Absolutely. <laughs> Fucking hell. Stay focused, One Direction, American-style cafe, upbeat, friendly service, bloody good food, um, and stick to it. And if Mark bangs on again about the justification to why I should accept that he cooks 99% of his food in a fucking deep-fat fryer, and to why they spent, what, £12,500 on six fucking microwaves, I'll put one up his ass sideways. Uh, why don't we do a couple of burgers up for uh, Richard and Nick? My organic burger, made with totally fresh ingredients, is miles away from Mark's deep fried crap. Nothing wrong with a burger when it's done like this. Lovely. Oh, lovely. Welcome to proper cooking. And it's cheaper to make than bought in silicon implants. Tomato chutney. It's a nice raw cherry tomato chutney with shallots. I put a little bit of parmesan on, toast them. The celebration burger. Lovely. So far, Nick and Richard have shown little interest in the food they're serving. What's the verdict? That's that fantastic. That is Absolutely awesome. brilliant. And that is just, that's the talking point. That is, I ate at more place and the burgers are awesome. You've got to go there and have one. Fresh, meaty, isn't it? And because Great. burgers are traditionally so badly done, what an opportunity to really excel. I can almost see them counting the money they could make with my American theme. Burgers and corned beef hash, pecan pie, peach melba, and smoked haddock chowder. The most important thing about this particular soup is, is that, you know, it's done up in the morning. Clam chowder made up, we're using potatoes, the clam juice to thicken it. We've gone a little step further and poached some quail's eggs. Then pour the chowder over the haddock, over the clams. The quail eggs still nice and runny inside. That's lovely. And you take a spoon, you think, oh, fuck it up. Mm. That's Moorish. The food is really coming together. This is the corned beef hash with holidays finished with pomeroy mustard. Mm. Not difficult at all. Difficult at all. Exceptional. I really like that. Finally, we're getting somewhere. Now all we need is some customers. 35,000 golfers use this place every bloody year. You know that? Yeah. And there's a small percentage of them actually get in to that bloody restaurant through there. So the idea now is going round there, stalking them a little bit on the green and ask them to taste this amazing food. I'm taking Kim, one of the waitresses, and Andy to entice them in with the food. Morning, sir. How you doing? Would you like a quick burger? Yes. Sir, there we are. Thank you very much. What in the, what's this in aid of? Uh, this is in aid of Andy. I'm this a new place. chef in the restaurant at Moore Place. Are you? We haven't used it. I've been in that place for oh. three years, four years, John. I used to come down this on a Sunday and we booked a breakfast and we had a tea booked and they just took so long to get the breakfast out. Really? That's interesting. Well, our, we, had, we had to tea off and had to leave the breakfast and I ain't been in there since. <laughs> Nick and Richard can't keep an empty restaurant going forever. We have to fill the dining room and make customers come back. This is a beautiful uh, mini hamburger. Your wife's going to go mad now. Look, you stood all down your jumper. Pecan pie. I wonder how many of these golfers are ex-customers. Mm. Toast the brand here now. Mm, yeah. Just trying to get uh, people into the restaurant, trying yeah. my good food. Is there a theme to your menu? Chowder, um, great burgers, corned beef hash, mm. uh, beautiful roasts, yeah. um, knickerbocker glories. Mm. Yeah. Would you come back to the restaurant? Oh, we certainly would. There are three days of the year when all restaurants, however bad, are full. New Year's Eve, Valentine's Night and Mother's Day. 
That's a good point. It's Mother's Day this Sunday, and it could be make or break for more plays. Three down, 34,997 to go. Hopefully, we've enticed some disgruntled customers back and made some new converts. My next task, to sort out the waiters. It's Friday night, and time is running out for practicing on customers. All nine of them. It's Andy's night off, and so Mark's running the kitchen. Yeah, I just want them squared up straight. You to, you know, I mean, I'm Peter, not he's not square. They just square them up. So why is he in the dining room? I just want them straight. Tonight, I want to see if the waiters can push the new menu. On a bed of spinach topped with a fried egg. Well, that's, that sounds right. great, actually. It is nice. I tried it I've yesterday. Changed, I've changed yeah. my mind already. Well done, Kim. One corned beef hash. Less butter on the spinach next time. OK, quick. Smoke had of chow, which is a soup. It's with the... With, uh, with, uh, uh, Come on, Peter. He's got had of fish. He's got... He's got... Uh, what's that egg? <laughs> Quiles. No, the customers know more than him. Can I have the camembert? Two of those, please. Oh, God. They've ordered the camembert. That's it. Please, that's it. Just OK. Zach looks so shy. I'm not sure he can walk and talk at the same time. Never mind sell the new menu. There you go. That's it. How was your start to It's a bit cool. Now things are going wrong in the kitchen as well. Mark can't even make the deep-fried camembert. It's frozen. And I thought it was his speciality. Thank you, sweet mom. Be better. Yeah, I mean, it's melting, but they're full of fat now. If it's under ripe cheese, then it's going to be a lot harder to get runny. Yeah. Even if you cook it from frozen, it's never going to go runny because it's not ripe. Now the chef's gone into the dining room. That's pretty much one member of staff for every two customers. And there are no vegetables in the main course. And they need my help to serve them. How are they ever going to manage with more than nine customers? Uh, everything they've touched so far on the evening is fucking overcooked, undercooked, unripened, deep-fried camembert. And, um... No I'm really worried. This dining room will be full on Sunday. There could be as many as 150 customers. We don't stand a chance. And if it continues to go like it is now, there'll be more fucking camembert inside the pot plants. Shocking. I mean, really fucking shocking. Dining room. Absolutely crucial. We can't do without you, and you can't do without us. And we've got to establish that teamwork, and we've got to come together as a team, and think together as a team, and then never forget the most important person is the customer. So it's a very straightforward exercise. Nick and I are going to arrive in the dining room for the first time. We've got a table booked for 1.30 for lunch today. Ready? Sit me down, present the menu, and sell me this restaurant. Here we go. Peter's been here for 15 um, years, so he should know what he's doing. Good Hello, afternoon. Hi, Mr. Whitehurst, nice to see you. Mr. Ramsey, <laughs> long time to see you. I've got a nice table for you. Yeah. Well, you can't fault his enthusiasm. Still a sparkling for both of you? Sparkling for me. Sparkling. Um, I'll have a beer, actually. Just Kim's been a waitress bottle. for five years. Yeah. Yeah, She's charming, yeah, but has no real yeah. training. A beer. Bitter. Bitter. Okay. okay. The lamb, perhaps? Lamb, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too positive. Zach's only been here a week. He knows nothing. Really nothing. Where's it from, the lamb? I'm not too sure. Okay. Um, oh, soup of the day. Soup What's of the that? day. Not too sure either, I'm sorry. Right. And may I have some water, please? Still sparkling? Yes, yeah, still. Please. Still uh, fresh or? Fresh or? Oh, God. <laughs> Fresh from the pond on the ninth green. <laughs> I would like you all to taste. They have less than 48 hours to master the new menu and be able to sell it to the customers. Mm. It seems like got bits of mussels in it. It's mm -hmm. not actual fish, is it? I'm not sure. Right. It's seafood. Yeah, it's it's in his seafood soup. It's got it's got some white fish there. It's got cockles, cockles, cockles. This is going to be harder than the kitchen. I used to work as a waiter, and I'm sure I can show them how it's done. Smoked haddock chowder, beautiful, creamy, soup and garnish with flakes of oat smoked haddock, finished with a wonderful poached quail egg. So, uh, nice beef chowder. Beef chowder, definitely not. We also have a special on today, clam chowder. The chowder? 
which I is a very nice uh, platter. Uh, it's very nice taste. Platter? No, platter, no. Nice, short, descriptive idea of the special. Clam chowder, very strong tasting. I'm turning fucking grey. There have to be the menu, go for the menu and what? But I'll, give, I'll give the menu to you. There you go. Okay, hold on a minute, let me just see what we got. Last time. Sharp tasting, got a special twist to it as we put a quail Z in it. A quail Z in it. Much better. Quail Z in it, really good. Even my pubes are going grey. Garnished with the uh, oaks of haddock. Flake, I'm sorry, garnish to... <laughs> Can you cook? No. <laughs> this whole thing is theatre, and this restaurant has to become a showcase, and each and every customer is going to eat in here on Sunday, gearing up for a bloody busy day, has to remember you. Yes. And if they remember you and we serve good food, boy, are they going to come back. And, and one last chance for Zach. Here we go. Right. I'm ready. This one I can feel in my bones. I can see how relaxed you are. You're looking good, you're cool, you're dude, and bang, give it to me. The, the smoked haddock chowder is a very nice dish. Um, it has a nice creamy, fishy garnished with flakes and a nice uh, smoked haddock in the middle. <laughs> it's been selling like hotcakes. <laughs> it would be funny if it wasn't for Mother's Day. Oh, shit. We've only had like two days to prepare, though, so it's like. Oh, fucking hell, you got two days to prepare one fucking speech. I've got 24 hours to get a fucking ration ready. Zach. Zach! I'm more than halfway through my time at Moore Place. The food's better, the waiters have improved, but without any customers, it's all a bit pointless. There are three days of the year when every ration should be full, even purple ones. New Year's Eve, Valentine's Day, and Mother's Day. And Sunday is Mother's Day. Richard and Nick have been taking bookings, trying to claw back some money. Table plan. Good news is what? We've got 11 books. <laughs> no, we've got quite a bit more than that, but... Hit me with it. 181. Shit! Confirmed. I should be pleased, but I'm terrified. I thought we'd struggle with 150, but 181? Yeah, it's making me feel worried slightly. A bit ambitious? A bit ambitious, yeah. yeah. But just, you know, what we're trying to do and turning this place around... He's trying to taking get up a division, in. yeah, and yeah. getting customers in here, but... And what worries me is that, you know, they're still not turned on. I think they've bitten off more than they can chew with the amount of covers they want to do. Mm. I'm as worried as Andy, but I have an idea. Roast chicken, just like your mother used to make, but with a twist. Carved at the table to take pressure off the kitchen. You've cut a chicken before? <laughs> no. You've cut a chicken before? <laughs> no. You've cut a chicken before? Many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. <laughs> yeah. well, okay. Rich? At home, of course. Uh, Everyone's home. going to so. learn including the owners. One chicken each. JC, you thought you were coming down here for a round of golf. No, you're not. I want you to do a chicken. Buffet. Ready? Yeah. I've brought in JC, one of my best maitre d's. He knows everything that there is to know about service and about carving a chicken. I mean, one, one of the so classic uh, cutting we, we do. First, cut off the legs. Then separate the drumstick from the thigh. Next, cut along the breastbone. Keep the knife close to the carcass and take off the breast. I will, I will leave the skin myself, yeah. I think, I think it's nice also to leave the skin and the customer can do what, what he wants, yeah. So we do one breast, one, one leg. Turn the chicken over and remove the succulent oyster underneath. That's a nice little piece of meat. Voilà. On Sunday. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> £4.50 an hour. No, no, we'll push the boats out. <laughs> 4 dollars 75 Man's got talents. Come on. Time for everyone to practice. First time for you? First time for me. Yeah? Chicken virgin. Fork up the arse. Fork up the arse. <laughs> Which is the arse? <laughs> the legs are first. And then you go onto the breast. The chicken has to be carved in three minutes or the rest of the food will have gone cold. Like a chicken. Doesn't seem a bit of And you cut the leg beautifully. You cut the drum off. You've got the thigh there. Yeah, look, that's so right. They're, they're, they're <laughs> done brilliant. They're just, you're just having problems with the breast. Yeah. Tomorrow they'll have to carve in front of the customers, and it'll have to look better than this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We've got some shreddy <laughs> cat food here. <laughs> yeah. It's like the fucking fox has attacked it. <laughs> The chickens are coming on, and it'll be so nice to have chickens carved at the table and, yeah, and getting sure. the waiters to take some pressure Brilliant. off our fucking shoulders on Sunday with gratin dauphinoise in a bowl yeah. on Lovely. the table. Yeah, yeah. Um, fresh peas, because yeah, it's just coming yeah. to season. Yeah, perfect. And yeah. so that's the major selling point yeah, yeah, for the dining room. Yeah. And pecan pie. Instead of being positive about Mother's Day, Mark's worrying about old customers who are expecting the 1970s menu he's already sent out. The people that have booked have seen this. Yeah. 
Yeah, as long as they know they're going to get the beef, lamb, chicken. The saving grace is they may have seen the menu, but they haven't fucking tasted it. Yeah, absolutely. So that's one big fucking relief for me straight away. <laughs> I really want Mark to be right behind the changes. In respect of how many we got booked, we're going to be in the shit big time. Yeah. And, and if we can entice 25% of these customers on Sunday to return, you know... Well, we've got them. Th yeah, you've got them. The simple truth is that Nick and Richard have got greedy and overbooked. They have to learn to care for their customers. Do you think you're both now capable of running a restaurant? As you've said before, and as we've not made any bones about, we're not food experts, we're not restaurant operators. I think we need to be in here. Mm -hmm. it's certainly in the short to medium term, we need to keep building our capability. If you are going to go a division and take it from strength to strength, you have to get firmer. Mm. I have to do it every day. Mm. Because there's a part of me that thinks, Christ, you nasty bastard. And now that you guys are physically hands-on, I mean, really hands-on, it'd be so good to keep control of it. Hold tight to those fucking reins. If Richard and Nick are serious about getting stuck in, we could still get through Mother's Day. I'm going to take them at their word and give them some real work to do. I really wish I could repaint the building for tomorrow, but at least I can do something about the inside. The minute you walk in here, the first thing you look at is the Christ, what the entrance? A little bit disoriented because you're confused to where the restaurant is. At the moment, the customers are in danger of getting lost on the way into the dining room. Yep. Walk through. Down to the right, and then when you come into here, it's such a lovely area here. And what I was thinking, see all these plants that side yeah. there? Yeah. Let's get this over here, a little bit of screen. Yeah. Here, maybe one of those little Indian screens. Sectioned off, and it just gives a nice, smooth, flow clear through, yeah. flow through. Yeah. If you don't catch them, they often feel, they often mill around here. Yeah. It's like, it's almost a barrier. Disorientated. Yeah. Come through this door, walk in, first thing you see, yeah. horrible. Yeah. Plastic coat round. So the area outside the restaurant is just as important as inside. One more, um, Very warm. It's even more intriguing now than it is when you walk through to the. No, no, sir. What do you think? Wow, beautiful yeah. entrance. Excellent. Where's the restaurant? Oh, it's just down here onto the right. There's that natural little follow snake. It, follow. Yeah, you can follow. Everything is ready for Mother's Day. Just one last test to see if Richard can carve the chicken in less than three minutes. Three minutes. <laughs> How are you feeling? <laughs> Have you started? No, no, yeah. No, no. <laughs> How am I feeling? Yeah. Overwhelmed. Well, we've started. Look at that. It's smart. Have you been practicing? Only, only at home. Every, only <laughs> every hour of every minute of every day. <laughs> One minute ago. <laughs> He's done it. Richard's ready to face his customers. <laughs> Two minutes, 20. Well done. <clears throat> Can I just say that we've got 50 roast chickens for tomorrow to sell? Fucking that out. Let me think. That's 100 legs that could go into <laughs> someone's lap, isn't it? <laughs> Morning, guys. The big day has arrived. And if we're going to give the diners a Mother's Day to remember, we'd better get cracking. Andy, how many chickens are going in? Six chickens down that, down that oven there. I've got a chicken in there, and then I've got that whole tray of chickens here. As well as roast chicken, Andy's cooking a ribeye beef with all the trimmings. And Hervé, he's in charge of the Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> Hervé! You cannot make Yorkshire pudding like this. Fucking hell. Not exactly how your mother made them. They're like bullets. Maybe you have to cook them longer as well. Yeah, yeah? And, and, and hotter to start off with, just to get them rising. Morning. Oh, you got 15 chickens. It'd be nice if you could do 10 of them. What, me personally? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that. I'm going to start to think about chicken. <laughs> OK, here we go, Rebe. Yorkshire puddings. Whee! What do you reckon? 50, 50. Fingers crossed. If my Yorkshire puddings rise, the kitchen will be almost ready. Okay, Peter. Just one last pep talk for the waiters. I just want you to stop crashing around, move around the dining room like a ballerina. And see that wonderful <laughs> floor out there? You just treat that like it's Swan Lake, gliding in and out of all the tables. If we get this right, more plays will really take off. If not, we'll offend half the mothers in Isha. Oh, we shouldn't be under this pressure on fucking Mother's Day. Quick look. Okay, and just stay there two seconds. 
No, 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 does he get out of the way, you're blowing on them, knocking them down. Look at everybody standing here, away from my fucking Yorkshire. Fuck off out of here! <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Ready? One more look, one more look. Just in case I was imagining things. No. Ready? No. Watch. Ready? 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 Right, where's that French little fucker? Come here. Hey, mate. End of story. OK, 50 minutes to go. First table's arriving at 12 o'clock. Quarter two. Um, yeah. Andy, do you want to leave from the kitchen? Yeah. OK. Um, starters. Smoked haddock chowder. There's a creamy fish soup garnished with oak smoked haddock, main courses, roast chicken carved at the table. That's down to you guys. Make Push it. the chicken. Traditional roast beef. With Yorkshire puddings. Yorkshire puddings. A la Herve. <laughs> 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 oh, okay, we're back. Christ, when you think this time last week, we went from two to 180 for lunch today. So, I'm going to be in the dining room, right behind them, giving them a little bit of support, because I think the kitchen's pretty much set. We're there, but the dining room's still a little bit apprehensive. <laughs> Bookings have been staggered over two sittings, so we'll be working for six hours straight. You just want for the peas. After Zach's performance with the chowder, I put him on bar duty. You want to die, Pets? Kim, Nick, Richard, and Peter will work in the floor. And he's in charge of the kitchen with Hervé as his right hand man. You've got three minutes, Hervé, yeah? How many is it for? How many is the chicken? Four, four. four and the executive four, chef, four. well, yeah, he's yeah. in charge of crockery. Okay, you've got three chowder bowls up there. Happy Mother's Day. Homemade wall place burger. It's a thick beef burger with a charred grilled bun. And it tastes brilliant. <laughs> it will do Nick the world of good to meet some customers. The burgers are selling well, but at the moment, not enough chicken. If just two or three of you want the chicken, and we'll bring it out to your table and call it for you at the table. How come you're not selling the chicken, huh? It's not one to try. Go on, we want to go for a break. <laughs> <laughs> they actually sell one chicken. The rest of the dining room will start to see sort of a little bit of excitement, a little bit of magic happening around the table. So they'll all start ordering, which then, within an hour, will run out, which is exactly what we need. Now there's a nice buzz coming out of the room. It sounds really happy. Here he comes. Give it to me. Four chicken. Me. Chicken for four. Well done, well done, big boy. Four roast chicken. After all my doubts, it's Peter who sold the first chicken. Spring chicken. Well, that's not you then. Sure enough, soon everyone wants one. It's a mutant chicken. My oh, goodness me. What's the idea of doing it at the table? Mm -hmm. Just to get How do you feel about having a chicken carved on the table? Difference? Makes you feel a bit more hungry. Half on the knuckle. Right, think of the drumstick. What's that bit? I've never seen that bit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want a bit of each? Yeah, that's fine. Relax, it's only a chicken. Everybody's rising to the occasion, and the first sitting's going really well. <laughs> Take two. There you are. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to see the dining room full and feel the buzz. Oh, thank you so much. Lovely. But on the second sitting, the overbooking's causing a problem. There are just too many people. There's a table of 19 and a table of 15 and a 14 pretty much coming at the same time. And it's not very good when you've got, like, 48 people all at once because it's shanty the kitchen. <laughs> Nick and Richard have to learn a cardinal rule. Put the customers first, make them feel really special, and build a sense of loyalty. I don't expect to come out for a family meal and have to wait as long as this. 
It's not a question of fast food. It's a question now we've been here an hour and a half and we've had a starter. That's it. Not a lot of explanation other than we've been really busy. Yeah. <laughs> we've kept cheerful, haven't we? Except for Colin. Still, there we are. We learn and we don't come back again. That's it. <laughs> Have you ever had a chicken carved at your table? No. Well, I've not done this many times Kim's trying her best, but charming the customers just won't work. They want to eat. At least you know it's fresh, though. Remember, unhappy customers destroy reputations. I mean, how the fuck can you cook for nearly 50 people at one time? Yeah? The food was very good. Yeah. The rest of it, the structure, the organisation. I'm sorry, mate, you've done that. Perhaps some more waiting staff. I mean, the girl's done her best, but you know, she's the only one on her own. The guys in the black shirts and everything that were the managers, they were sitting down talking to their mates in the conservatory there, and they only left two people serving everybody else in here. I'd like to say goodbye, but we're still waiting to pay the bill. Let's hope Richard and Nick learn their lesson. The dining room's empty now, but it's been full for the first time in a long time and the vast majority of customers went away happy. One chicken left. OK, Evie. Bravo. Well done. Thank you. Yes? Happy? Yeah, it's good working with Andy. Yeah? Will you use my recipe for Yorkshire puddings? But I'm a bloody French. I know I you're the bloody York. French. I, I know. don't do Yorkshire puddings. Don't mind you for the last minute. Thank you, everyone's yeah. Oh, come on. We've got to the end of the day. We've got to have some fisticuffs before no, it goes. Don't mind, don't Everyone performed in the kitchen. Even Mark. It wouldn't be right. It's an easy target at the end of the day. Oh, Mark's not an easy target. Yeah, I am. You know, you said earlier, didn't you? You've got it. a lot of material to no, work with. I just love it when you put that executive chef before your name. Hey. Did I? Hey. Oh, did I? And the waiters did a great job. I'm really impressed with the way everyone pulled together. That was fantastic. And you were running around crazy today, like proud cock. Wow, this is full. <laughs> this is heaving, this is buzzing. Right. Hey, I'm running Those it. And happy as Larry. Since we started, we've never had a day like we've had today in here. One complaint was the fact that the food was taking too long, and the rest of the complaints were just customers still not happy with that bloody colour. Huh? <laughs> that purple monstrosity. <laughs> huh? And you know what? A quarter to twelve, lunchtime, I didn't think you were going to do it. Because I didn't think any of you were good enough to do it. <laughs> Fucking well done. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Maybe there's hope for the Purple Palace yet. <laughs> when I first arrived at Mort Place, I found a restaurant in crisis. Where is everybody? It felt more like a rest home. Today, how many booked for lunch? None. Nothing. The food was deep fried, microwaved, mm. or out of a packet. That's fucking 70s crap at its best. Yeah. Too many cooks, and not one of them any good. Okay. Thank like, fuck, I'm not hungry. And I met possibly the worst waiter in the world. Oh, Zach, I'm fucked. I mean, really fucking shocking. But by the end of the week, things had started to improve. That was in March 2004. Now I'm back. Oh, for God's sake. They've still kept it purple, and on a sunny day, it still looks like a shithole. Jesus Christ. It's a relief to find out Andy's still heading up the kitchen. How are you? How you doing? All right. Good to see you. Yeah. You look like you've had a busy summer. Well, yeah, it's getting out of hand. <laughs> the Ramsey burger. <laughs> that wasn't a Ramsey burger. <laughs> um, how many are we selling a day? Oh, we're doing 80 kilo of beef mince a week. 80 kilos a week? My God. It really kicked off in a big way. How do they take care of the old pudding? <laughs> hey, how are they? Yeah, they're better than yours. They're better than mine. I'm happy. Hey, I'm here to be beaten, Hervé, you French fucker. <laughs> do me a favour. Make me one. Morning. Morning, Are you well? Very well, you. Sir? Uh, yeah, I was until I arrived. It's still purple. It's still purple. It's about priorities, isn't it? You know, we've, we've, we've continued to spend money here on, uh, on things, and it's, it's on the list at some stage. Bullshit. Yes. Um, but if you remember the last, you know, chat we had, the dynamics of getting the restaurant busy was the sort of objective sure. behind this yeah, whole sure. thing. And that was, so, that was doing the set menu and dropping the price down, and then yeah. since then, it's probably settled in at 60 70% higher than it was before. And Mark's the gardener now, is that right? Where Mark's is up in Leicester, running his own pub. So now he's an executive barman. <laughs> 
we've really given Andy his head, haven't we, in terms of the menu and let him get on with it. The one thing I would say, categorically, the food here is great. The product yeah. is great. But the proof is in the pudding. Hello, here's your ah. Yorkshire pudding. Excellent. Um, that looks nice, uh, Hervé. Hervé at least seems to have improved on that flat pancake he made me last time I was here. Mm. It's not bad, Hervé, you know that. It's actually not bad. It's a little bit too thick at the bottom. It needs more salt. Do it. Do it? <laughs> Do <something. laughs> OK, chef. Better than yours? Of course fucking not. <laughs> Don't get that fucking excited. Hervé is the only original brigade member left, but Andy seems to have succeeded in knocking a brand new team into shape pretty quickly. Front of house still has the charming Peter. How are you doing? Zach's been moved to the safest place, behind the bar. How's this one had a clam chowder? Uh, well, we don't see anyone, I think. <laughs> I knew they'd be on their best behaviour for me, so to get a genuine overview on how more plays has progressed, two weeks ago, I sent in a spy. Very cheery service from the old fellow in an open neck shirt, black Matthew tried, Ford is a renowned food they critic. to be on excellent terms with the mostly codgerish lunch. Hello, Matthew. His frank reviews have made and broken many businesses. Joe! <laughs> and he came away with some strong opinions about the Purple Palace. Overall impressions? Were they informative on the menu? There was an old, the old codger who was... Uh, yes. There, there. He was absolutely... He was sweet, he was very nice to my daughter, he was very informative, he was clearly taking pleasure in all he was doing. And um, style of food? Um, um, modern European, I would say, and really very competently done. It was working some well-known combinations. Mm -hmm. Every now and then it just gets a bit too fancy, and I think maybe to justify the, you know, the dining room. There was deep-fried rocket, which I thought was a bit mm. weird. What the fuck would you want to deep-fry it for? You ask me? I would... <laughs> I, would I'm just, I was just a restaurant critic. I wouldn't know about these things. You know, what goes on in chef's hands, frankly, <laughs> is a mystery to all, frequently to themselves. <laughs> Nine bag. Deep fried rocket. Was that your idea? No? No, it was mine. But I've changed it now. Andy. Beet, beetroot crisps. Deep fried rocket's gone, has it? It's gone, it's gone. Dan was going to ask for that for lunch. It's all gone. Talking about lunch, I'm going to have a. Where are the menus? Let's have a look at the menus and um, I can order them. I'm starving. Despite his rocket abomination, Andy has definitely had a beneficial effect on the food here. So why? If they're doing a booming trade in the evening, and lunchtime still completely dead. Looking at the bar menu, I've got a good inkling why. Good afternoon. You're really ready to order, sir. I'll start off with a vegetable spring roll, please. Vegetable spring roll. Spring rolls? Yes, sir. Three little words spring to mind. Deep fried food. If a restaurant wants to get a good reputation, the food has to be consistently good throughout. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you. There you go, you can taste that one. They look frozen. Um, I'm not very keen on them. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. Mm. It's like a cremated turd. Yeah. Fucking disgusting. Mm. Miles away. So we've got good food at the restaurant, and it's completely spoiled by the shit they're serving in the bar. And if you're ever going to attract people from the bar to come and eat in your restaurant, you've got to stop serving that shit. Full stop. Sad. <laughs> Service! The deep fried rubbish on the Moore Place bar menu is in danger of completely undermining its new hard fought reputation. Service! When you've got such diverse menus, it's going from sort of first division straight down to the fourth. Two dishes on the bar menu is more expensive than your lunch menu. And the food on the lunch menu is ten times more exciting than the food in the bar. I want to suggest incorporating more of the restaurant menu into the bar, slowly but properly. Mm -hmm. So anyone coming in for a quick snack, whatever it happens to be, is an indication to how good it is in there. For me, if, if, it, if it helps the consistency and it helps the speed of delivery, mm -hmm. then um, it's no gamble. Yeah. No more deep fat food. No more. And just to make sure, fryer. I'm putting the deep fat fryer out of harm's way. Shit! The food on the evening menu is a huge contrast. The waiting staff can take pride in what they're selling. That is uh, our homemade chips. For the same price. <laughs> Richard and Nick have wisely cut prices. The result? Surprise, surprise. The average spend per head has gone up from a meagre £13 to over 20 quid. 
And if business continues at this level, their predicted annual turnover would have increased by nearly a million pounds. Everyone loves a Ramsey burger. <laughs> fantastic. The place is doing really well. Very, very busy. We've got rid of the fucking fryers, which is fantastic news. And it's a great restaurant. Food looks fantastic. They don't need any more. I'm out of here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. Cheers. But remember one thing. I'll be fucking back. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs>